homecoming, a time of great pageantry and excitement. The homecoming queen, and of course, college football. The Maryland Terrapins have reborn a football standard at College Park, the standard of winning. The Terps are five and one, and number three in the ACC. The Clemson Tigers come into Bird Stadium at three and three overall, and Coach Tommy West knows the importance of a win with ball hopes on the line. It's Clemson and Maryland next. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents Atlantic Coast Conference Football. This afternoon, our Exxon ACC Game of the Week features the Clemson Tigers coming to Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland to battle the 5-1 Maryland Terrapins. Hi, everybody, along with Doc Walker, Jack Corgan. Glad you could join us for a football game that looms large in terms of both these teams thinking about playing beyond this regular season. Well, now's the time to push it forward if you really want to have the aspirations of postseason play, big-time football, and for Clemson, both teams, as we look at the standings, you can, it's apparent Maryland's in a position to go forward. Maryland, if they win today, would at least qualify for a bowl game, and in this, their second-last home game, they really feel it's crucial to get that sixth victory here this afternoon. For Clemson, they've been up and down, Doc, and they really feel that they'll play well today if Nelon Green does. Green is a trigger man, a young man with so much talent, but he's really yet to put it all together to make the big plays. Hopefully for Clemson, they'll be able to get him out on the carpet, run a little more option, and let him utilize his athleticism. And Brian Cummings is back in the starting lineup trying to recapture that early season magic for the Terrapins. Well, you hit it on the head. This is his ball club, and he gets a chance now to lead the Maryland Terrapin offense. They run the football a lot better with Cummings at quarterback, and I suspect they're going to do a lot of that today. I think we'll see that indeed. Maryland, Clemson, big ACC matchup. We'll have more from College Park. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By your Carolina Chrysler and Plymouth dealers, home of the minivan store. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. And by First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. Welcome back to Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Homecoming and lots of activities going on. A guy who wants to be very active this afternoon is that gentleman, Jermaine Lewis, one of the most exciting players in the country, much less the Atlantic Coast Conference. He is part of that big play trio for the Maryland Terrapins, along with G. Roy Simon and Mansell Johnson. If these guys are active today, it bodes well for Maryland. Big plays may be the rule of thumb this afternoon, according to our Mike Hogwood. Uh, you're exactly right, Jack. Jermaine Lewis really wants to break one, whether it's on a punt return or catching a big pass, and the coaches want it to happen, too. They know the one thing that's been missing from Maryland the last couple of games is the big play with Jermaine Lewis. Absolutely a key today to opening up the running game for the Terrapins and getting it going. Now on the other side of the football, there's a big play guy for the Clemson Tigers. That's Antoine Wyatt. He, too, can make the deep ball happen. He's got blazing speed. When he touches the football, exciting things happen on the field. So Clemson's got to get the ball in Antoine Wyatt's hands today. They want some big plays out of him, and then they think the Tigers' offense is really going to roll. So keep your eye on Antoine Wyatt and Jermaine Lewis today. I can tell you the sun has come out after rain this morning. It is a beautiful day for football. The crowd is really going to come out to this game today. We thought it might be kind of light with the rain, but they've seen the sunshine. The Terrapins are right behind me, and I really sense a lot of emotion out of this team. They know they are 5-1. and one. They know what's on the line, and they're ready. Here they come. Back 
here at Bird Stadium on the campus of the University of Maryland. 50 degrees here at game time. Still a high humidity, but it appears that the clouds are starting to break up. We've had the sun come through, and that is good news for Mark Duffner as he wants a fast track for his football team, and they are really starting to find success in his fourth year here at Maryland. Tommy West doing a good job as well. Now nine and nine overall, three and three in this campaign. Tommy hoping to find a little more consistency. As we said, Clemson has been win one, lose one through the first six games this year. Clemson won the toss and deferred, so they will kick the ball off to Maryland here in the first quarter. Jeff Sauve will be the kicker. While the Terps will send Chad Scott as one of the deep men, and the other one is Jonathan Johnson. There is a breeze today, Doc, that has been blowing pretty hard at times. It'll be at Clemson's back here in the first quarter. That will be a factor, I think. Oh, it will. Nice little breeze, but I wouldn't trade it for the world just to have some sunlight. We were here like four hours ago, and it looked a little troubling. Well, the wind will also help dry the field out, which will be beneficial for both teams. The tarp was a big factor, Jack. The fact that Maryland has a tarp, uh, I think, will make a tremendous improvement on the field. Jeff Sauve puts foot to leather, and we're underway. Coming down to Chad Scott near the goal line. Scott finds some room up the near sideline. Hawk collared out of bounds, out past the 25-yard line. O.J. Childress on the stop for the Clemson Tigers. Maryland will put it in shop, just shy of their own 30-yard line, behind redshirt sophomore quarterback Brian Cummings. The youngster out of East Chester, New York, second in the conference in passing efficiency, bested only by Heisman candidate Danny Cannell of the number one ranked Florida State Seminoles. They will operate out of their one back offense with Buddy Rogers as the lone setback behind Cummings. Huge offensive line for Maryland. The Tigers show a seven-man front and now back off as they run First to Lewis on first down. Jermaine Lewis got only a couple. Pretty good work on the far side to keep that from being much farther. Let's take a look at our Carolina Jeep and Eagle starting lineups. We mentioned Cummings and Rogers, Lewis, James, Simon, and Johnson, the starting quartet of receivers. That big offensive line, Daryl Gilliam at left tackle, Doc's had a good year so far. And they're happy to have him back. Uh, had an injury, and you know, when you're trying to replace a Steve Ingram, that's saying a lot. Jermaine Lewis carrying the ball for the first time this year, gets five on first down. Cummings on the option, busted play, because Buddy Rogers went right as Cummings went left. Lamarick Simpson, the defensive end, covers up Brian Cummings. Let's set that Clemson defense for you. Veterans up front for the most part, but the key on that front seven has been Anthony Simmons, the true freshman out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. He's in on almost every tackle and a good secondary headed up by senior Brian Dawkins at strong safety. A loss of two on the Cummings run, so it'll make it 37. Again, Clemson shows blitz as McCrory drops down as a nose guard and then backed off. Cummings with time, looking for Simon. Contact downfield, and flags fly. We will have some arguments on this one. Liam on Evans, I think, will say that it was inadvertent and it wasn't a catchable well, ball. There you go. Could the receiver have actually made the grab? That's what Tommy West is saying on the far sideline. But I think his argument is not going to go his way. Courtney Mosey is our referee. Pass this interference afternoon. on the defense. 15 yard previous spot. First down. It'll be a 15 yard mark off and a first down for Maryland. You know, we've noted in the past, Maryland, yeah, that's obvious. A little contact and a shove. You know, you want to be a little cautious about that. Maybe a little bump with your stomach, not the arms. If you extend the arms, you're in big trouble. 
Watson averages about seven penalties a ball game for about nine yards an infraction. That 15-yard walk-off puts the ball at the Maryland 48, first and 10, as a trio of receivers go to the left of Brian Cummings. Mansell Johnson, the lone back to the right, as Cummings calls the play at the line of scrimmage. Rodgers on his first carry, not much at all. Good penetration by Carlos Curry, the middle guard. He and Lamarick Simpson stack up Rodgers for a little game. Well, Curry recognizes his job. His hands will be full. He knows that Maryland wants to come out and really try to establish some smash mouth football. This time, good base. See, when you get that kind of square base, you stand the center up. Greenstein, at this point, he really dominated on that play and was able to slide down and make the play. Carlos Curry will not make many tackles, but he does his job by stacking up that offensive line. Dirty work. Second and nine for Maryland. Wanted the quick slam. Johnson fell down. So he goes back to Lewis and it skies over his head incomplete. The Maryland Terrapins have not scored in the last eight quarters against the Clemson defense as they have been blanked the last two years. Clemson would love to do that again here this afternoon. They are giving up nearly 22 points a ball game defensively. Well, they won't do it unless they get more pressure on the quarterback. That time, Brian had enough time to come up here and figure out what's on our chalkboard. Third and nine. They converted their last third down on the interference penalty. Again, Clemson just rushing four. Buddy Rogers can't make the catch. It was another high pass. Good coverage on the play. And it'll set up a punting situation as Andre Carter was all over Buddy Rogers. So Brian Cummings battling the wind, perhaps, maybe trying to put too much on the ball as he's going into the wind here in the first quarter. And it's early on. I think you see a lot of jitters in that. When you have the bye week, I think it's not unusual to have an offense come out and not really click early on. Scott Milanovic, who has been an outstanding punter in his Maryland career, in addition to his quarterbacking duties, Ten punts on the season. You see his average. He has hit a 57-yarder. Dexter McLean, the lone safety, call it good fair catch on the short kick, and he makes it at the 30-yard line. That's a punt of only 21 yards. So Clemson will have good field position. We'll be back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. minutes gone by here at Bird Stadium. Clemson gets its first possession of the football game behind sophomore quarterback Neilon Green at their own 30-yard line. On the opposite, Green stumbled, gets it out to Priester, the tailback, good blocking in front of a Priester into Maryland territory. Finally brought down at the 49 of Maryland, a 21-yard pickup before Lamont Gore could knock him down. Well, they didn't waste any time. They got right to that offensive line. Will Young, 59. See the collapse block? That secures the edge. Then you got wide receivers downfield blocking for you. They're Wyatt, big-time receiver who's unselfish and will block. This is picture perfect. We talked about the bye weeks, but this offense is clicking right out of the box. Priester's 20-yard pickup. His second longest run of the season. He gets the call again and slips and falls right at the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at that offensive unit for the Clemson Tigers. Elon Green, Emory Smith, and Raymond Priester, the starting backfield. Wyatt Horn and Hall, they do not throw very much to the tight end, so Wyatt and Horn will be the primary receivers. Solid offensive line with some big boys headed up by Robert Jackson, the young man right here from the D.C. area. All 328 pounds of Mr. Jackson. H.D. Woodson, he's a monster. No gain on the slip, second and 10 for the Tigers. Just into Maryland territory. Option, Priester again, and he slips and falls again. We were curious as to how the wind or the field would be a factor, and it is slippery in parts. Defensively for Maryland, maybe the biggest story that has not been told in Maryland's resurgence this year, how well they have played. Hicks and Watson, the two Hickses, 
have made a big difference up front. Radcliffe Thomas, one of the great tacklers of all time here at Maryland, and a secondary headed up by A.J. Johnson, who has five interceptions on the season. Chad Scott, his cornerback partner, has three. Only second rank in the nation in total D. Third and ten for Clemson. They are a 40% efficiency on third down. Green on the scramble. Down he goes. Al Wallace and Johnny Hicks sack him for a yard loss and force a Clemson punt. Well, this is where Clemson had so many problems and that in obvious passing situations. This time, Al Wallace really takes care of business. At Clemson offensive line and pass pro, see too much penetration. You see the red shirt just pushing up. Al comes in, makes the collapse. He's got Johnny Hicks there just for an insurance. Good defense. 13th sack of the season for that Maryland defense. Chris McAnally will come on to punt it away. Kick coming down. Fair catch called for by Chad Scott. And it sails into the end zone. Make that Jermaine Lewis down there. We've talked about the field conditions with the wet turf. But down on the sidelines, Mike Hogwood, maybe the wind is a bigger factor. I really think it is, Jack. It's gusting at times. And Brian Cummings came over and talked about it last series. He knew he overthrew those passes trying to compensate for the wind. Now, you talk about the field, Jack, it's dry in a lot of spots, but where those seams were, where they rolled out the different tarps, there are a lot of wet spots. We've seen some slippage around the 50-yard line. That's where one of those seams was, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. All right, Mike Hogwood will be keeping us up to date throughout the game down in the field. Second possession for Maryland at their own 20-yard line. As they normally do, the Terrapins call the play at the line of scrimmage. And it's Rodgers trying to turn the corner and got just a couple. Patrick Sapp will not get credit for a tackle, but he did a good job of stacking up the blocking in front of Buddy Rogers. He really did. After these seven he allows him. Now watch these guys, Brady. We talk about lateral quickness defensively. They just don't give up. So you see Sapp, he's engulfed by the block, but he maintains his balance. Doesn't get hooked. That allows his buddies to come over and help him out. Give Buddy Rogers a three-yard pickup, second and seven. They run the four receiver set, but most of the time they are not balanced. They go three and one. They slip it out to Rogers on a quick screen. He tries to cut back, fumble the football, and Clemson recovers. First turnover of the ball game, the Clemson Tigers will have it in great field position at the 27 yard line of Maryland. Andre Carter with the recovery. What a good call. That freshman 41, Anthony Simmons. Again, you're going to watch him come in the screen. The way he balances this deal up. See, he doesn't give ground. That allows forces to cut back. And see, there you come. An aggressive defense. Scraping, getting to the ball. Maryland struggling offensively. But give the Tigers some credit, folks. This is the way you draw it up on defense. Pursuit, reckless abandon, going after the football, scraping. Coming up with turnovers. Maryland has not given the ball away very much this year. Only their 10th turnover. On first down, it's Priester. Slipped away from a couple of tacklers and gets good yardage out close to a first down. Went right through the tackle attempt of Tim Brown, and it was finally Chad Scott who stood him up. Yeah, this is just an attitude. I talked about it a little early in the open about Clemson. They just expect to win here in Maryland. They expect to come out and be physical right now from a running standpoint. Hard to argue that. I mean, this is smash mouth football. You got the guys in the white shirt mashing the guys in the red shirts. Priester, who was a fullback a year ago, was averaging nearly five and a half yards a carry this season for the Tigers. This is the fullback, Emory Smith, getting the call. Bouncing off bodies, taking it for a first down inside the 15, close to the 10-yard line. Lamont Gore finally rode Smith to the turf, but again, two power runs for the Clemson Tigers, and Chad Scott was shaken up on the play. Just hit him up. Emory Smith, you know his brother real well, Emmett with the Cowboys. I mean, this is a powerful run. Young man MVP in the 93 Peach Bowl. Now watch this, center of balance. See, look at that gravity. The legs keep moving. He's challenging people. Boy, that's embarrassing if you're Maryland. I mean, that's just going right at you in your face with a challenge that up to this point, you have to stop. Chad Scott looked like he had been chopped down by a lumberjack after the contact with Smith. Green on the rollout. Gets the ball away inside the five-yard line out of bounds at the four. 
It's a pickup of eight. Second and short for Clemson. Offensively, this is when you can really operate, when you can set the pass up with the run. Going to the run option, and Green, again, always a threat when he gets on the grass. They secure it, nice hands. Way to know where you're at. Second down, they can get a first down just inside of the two-yard line. They send Wyatt and Crooks to the right and pitch it left to Priester. Touchdown, Clemson. For the sixth time in seven games this year, Maryland gives up the first points of the ball game. It hasn't stopped them very much, but Clemson has to feel good about taking advantage of an early turnover. Now that's the key. A lot of times you get an interception or a fumble recovery, and the offense will go out, and they don't make things happen. When you can finish it, this is how you finish a series. Again, Abadu gives good pressure there for Maryland, but he holds on, and it's just not enough. Total command on the line of scrimmage by the Clemson Tigers. Jeff Sabe on to attempt the extra point from the hold of Travis Harvey, and he curled it through. 7.49 to play here in the first quarter. Clemson taking advantage of the Carter fumble recovery, leading by seven. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. Mark Duffner plotting some defensive strategy with his defensive unit after they give up the touchdown to Clemson midway through this first quarter. The Maryland to line, Jack. Yep. Get across that line of scrimmage. Jonathan Johnson and Clifton Crosby, who is back on the kickoff rather than Chad Scott, who took a shot from Emory Smith on that last touchdown drive for Clemson. Strong wind at the back of Jeff Sauve. And into the face of the Terrapins throughout this first quarter. And these soccer stuff kickers, don't you love it? I mean, the old days, you could just put it there right in the middle. Now they got to turn the tee and they twist the ball again. Airtime, man, airtime. You don't rush things up when you're on television. Sauve slips and falls on the kickoff. Bounces to Johnson and he slips and falls at the 13 yard. Good thing going. Well, the short kick because of the slip, but no return because of the slip. Clemson goes four plays. Raymond Priester on two of them, including the touchdown. A four-yard run. Priester already with 30-plus yards in the ball game, averaging even better than he normally does. Tail Maryland does. They punted and turned it over on their first two possessions. Ryan Underwood is now in the ball game as the super back. He picks up Sapp on the blitz. Here comes Sapp now after coming fumble. And it's still loose. And Maryland comes away with it. Anthony Simmons had the ball. And it popped free. And Maryland keeps possession. But Brian Cummings is down holding his right. No, it's not Brian Cummings. It's Jermaine Lewis, I believe, down, holding his right knee. Yeah, see, Underwood doesn't finish the block. He can't throw a wing out. Watch Captain Simmons guy right like there. Zapp. So aggressive. You know, this is a team that emotionally has been down. That reminds me of Lawrence Taylor, folks. You see that? A primary function to go in and knock that ball out, trailing from behind. Now, this is when all the ball's on the ground. Who wants it? Bad error right there by Simmons. Secure the football. Eric Greenstein is the man who came up with the ball. It ends up being a nine-yard game. But Jermaine Lewis for the moment out of the ball game. Cummings on the option. Has the first down over the 25 to almost the 27-yard line. Patrick Sapp on the stop. First, first down by anything other than a penalty for Maryland in this first quarter with eight minutes gone by. Clemson leading at 7-0. Good to see Lewis back on the field. You won't know now how uh, the injury affects him. Right now, the adrenaline is pumping. He wants to play. Might have gotten popped on that knee. Looking at the pileup on that fumble, didn't look like he was twisted, so we'll keep an eye on number four. Cummings, the rolling pocket left. Slips a few tacklers, 
but then slips down when he had a lot of open field in front of him. It'll end up being a loss of about a yard on the play. Again, it rained last night. It rained hard this morning. The field was covered, but there were seams in the sections of tarpaulin. Yeah, Forney plays this well. Warren Forney, 90 at Clemson, I mean, just would not be denied. When you force the quarterback out further than he'd like to be, you obstruct his vision, and they never stop. One thing you can see early on now, Clemson wants this a little more than Maryland at the stage. Right now, Clemson, the more aggressive pair uh, of, of the pair of teams here this afternoon. Coming, play action fake, steps up again, keeps the football, gets it out to about the 33-yard line. He'll be about four yards shy of the first down. Oh, Patrick good. Sapp again on the stop. He's motoring. I mean, he's running away from some guys that can scoot. Cummings had 600 yards rushing his senior year in high school, 3,100 yards in the air. Great athlete. Talk a little bit more about his baseball potential. We'll ask you, Jack. You being a guy with the Indians. He's not he's bad. He's an athlete, though. Yes, he he's is. An athlete. Eric Bradford, number 87, also very active on that play. Third and four for the Terrapins. into Clemson territory at the 49-yard line. First down, Maryland. 18-yard catch and run for Jermaine Lewis. Richard Roberts on the edge. Number eight, Maryland Terrapins. It's teamwork, folks, and you won't see it any better than that. You know, when you got a guy that runs 4-2-5, you don't have to come up with a lot of plays. Just get the ball in his hand. Quick drop back. The look off by Cummings was important. Then you see the guys outside blocking. Rodgers comes out and gets a big-time block on that. That's a good operation. First down for Maryland. Their first time in Clemson territory. They fake the pitch. Cummins looking downfield. Troy Simon couldn't make the catch down near the 25-yard line. Carlos Curry unloaded on Brian Cummings as he released that football. Yeah. He's just saying, hey, I'll get it. You've got to make plays, especially early on. See Terrapins trying to hold up Clemson right now. Good pass protection. He tried to make a basket catch instead of going out and extending the hands, looking the ball all the way in. Be aggressive to the ball with your hands. Yes. There's Carlos Curry. He and Eric Bradford were the ones putting the pressure on Brian Cummings. He's been doing it all afternoon. Big matchup there with Curry and Eric Greenstein, the center for the Terrapins. Cummings option had to get rid of it in a hurry. Brian Underwood did all he could to get back to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Simmons making the stop, but there was pressure from the corner early on. Big Pat Ward, young man out of St. John's High School here in Washington, 7 0 right guard. Good scoop block. I mean, you got to collapse the backside when you're going up against a defense that runs like the Clemson Tigers. And you don't see it. It's a little dirty work. Unsung heroes. But so far, offensive line play by the guard. Ward and Henny been pretty good. Another third down play for Maryland. Not much success on first and second down thus far for the Terrapins. Cummings with time. Contact down the field, but a good no call as Lewis was covered pretty well on the far side by Peter Ford. Yeah, so you can't get over the block now. G. Roy had a shot to make a big play. You know, you kill a drive, you kill momentum, and you put an offense right now that's smoking back on the field. 4-14 to play here in the first quarter. Tommy West football team will get the ball back. See how the Milanovic punt goes into that strong win. His last one went but 21 yards from about the same spot on the field. Dexter McLeon. Again, will come way up because of the win, but that was all a fake. This is rolling towards the corner. And what a play to keep that ball out of the end zone by Walt Williams inside the one-yard line. A 47-yard punt with no return. Clemson backed up deep inside their own territory. Yes. 4-0-4 to play in the first quarter. 7-0 Clemson. Effort here by Walt Williams, number 15. Let's watch the end of the play. Did he do it in time? 
Well, you work with this play hours and hours. Ooh -wee. Kind of close. I think he pulled it off. Junior out of Homestead, Florida, who, if you're a receiver, you play a special team, you thrive off making big plays. Clemson with a pretty good sized offensive line in their own right will try and smash it out from their own one yard line. They give it to Emory Smith. Big hole on the right side. Smith for a first down. Clemson brings in Glenn Roundtree, their starting offensive guard into the backfield. See number 75? Boy, and he takes up some space as well. You got a guy like Emory Smith. He is ideal for short yardage. I mean, that's just a pounding up front and a guy who I think you're going to hear a lot from this afternoon. Smith, the 240-pound redshirt junior out of Pensacola, Florida. First down, Clemson. Their ground game has been impressive so far. Green, option. Settles read it pretty well and stops him after a short gain. It'll be a second and long down to the sidelines to Mike Hogwood. Chad Scott has been a key to this Maryland defense all season long at cornerback. Last series, he had to go out with an injury. He has a stinger in his left shoulder. It's okay now, but it's something the trainer's going to keep a close eye on for the rest of the game. I got to tell you, Mike, when Emory Smith ran into him, he took a heck of a pop on the previous Clemson drive. Those are the kind of plays that you lay in your bed and you think about him playing a big, strong fullback and hope it doesn't happen. Four-yard pickup on the option. Green changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Looks for the quick slant deflected into the air. Good pressure by Eric Hicks, the 6'6 sophomore out of Erie, Pennsylvania, who swatted down the green pass as he tried to throw the slant to Tony Horn. Good defensive linemen do a couple of things. You don't get penetration. You elevate. You read the quarterback and you get up. He got those paws on it, knocks it down, and they were inches away for a big play for the Terrapins. Radcliffe Thomas, who's got a couple of interceptions already this year, nearly came up with the deflection. Hicks checks out as Maryland adjusts into their dime package with just three down linemen here on third and long. Draw play. Priester picks his way and has a Clemson first down. Nice piece of running by Raymond Priester. Radcliffe Thomas on the stop, but not before. It's a Clemson first down. Boy, right, Timmy Watson, if he could have this one back, I'm sure he'd like to. You beat the fullback, you beat Smith. Can't circle around block. You gotta physically fight your way through a block, then he made the play. It's good running though by Priester. 2.35 to play here in the first quarter. Raymond Priester, not a bad per yard, per carry average so far. Fullback Smith, not as much this time. First contact by Eric Bradford. Bradford, uh, Eric Barton, excuse me, a true freshman out of Alexandria, Virginia, who was playing one of the inside linebacker spots right now. And they like him a lot. Young man out of Edison High School who has come on in last week and a half uh, got some presence, made his presence felt. I mean, he's uh, someone they're very excited about. Well, it gives him a lot more size than Tim Brown. The normal starter is a 210-pound inside backer. Priester, oh, popped that time by Al Wallace and Ratcliffe Thomas. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. They played it well. One thing about Barton, here he is, only a freshman, a true freshman, folks. Uh, only really two freshmen playing for Duffner's group. What a contrast to past years. Kept the shoulders square. Sooner or later, man, you just have to answer the challenge defensively. See, that's helmet on helmet. I like that. See, there's the screen. See, Ratcliffe, shoulder square. That is the key. Good collision. Excellent collision. Elon Green shifts into the shotgun. Third and a long three. Option. Priester. First down. Clemson. I like the concept of that play. Well, you have to use your tools. And anytime Green has the ball and he's in motion, you know, he's gonna he's gonna make you delay. He makes you pause. Hey what so far Clemson, they really worked on this. You know, extra time in the buy. Good game plan. Maryland has yet to really come up with a solution. Maryland is less than a minute away from a ninth consecutive quarter without points against Clemson. Three 
Green on first down, pressured from Hicks, avoids it, and gets it downfield, incomplete, intended for Antoine Wyatt, but good pressure from Eric Hicks, Al Wallace, and Cornelius White. Yes, that's the way you play the game. I mean, defensively, you've got to get after a quarterback like Dylan Green. you got to disrupt his day, make him hate the fact that he's playing quarterback. I mean, that's the soft spot in any offense, whether people like to hear it or not. you got to put hats on the quarterback. Neil Anu has had better success, ironically, on the road than at home here in 95. Death Valley, tough place to play. Second and ten, Green on the option. Lost the football, Maryland recovered. A.J. Johnson comes up with it after Eric Martin stripped the football away. So that opportunistic Maryland defense does it again, and this time it's the freshman. Now, this is the way you work it out. Sooner or later, you have to think that tendencies will play to your favor. You just have to keep you dig in there again. Fundamentally sound. I mean, just at the right spot, despite the bad turf, and able to get a hand in there. And a young man who's a freshman out of Edison High School in Alexandria, he is going to be a good one here at Maryland. Maryland has had some problems with the giveaways. It has been a key factor for Maryland's success this year. The first turnover of the Tigers gives Maryland its best field position. And Cummings wants to put it up. Looking downfield for Roberts. Almost intercepted in the end zone by Andy Ford. As he sent everybody on the fly routes, all four wide receivers took off for the end zone. He tried to hit the inside man, Roberts, and Andy Ford nearly had the pickup. Hogwood mentioned about the turf and the seams in it. It really hurt the offensive line on this one. It, it, he let it go, but the receiver was not in a position to make a play, and, and Roberts, not where you want to be. 30 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Second and 10 for Maryland at the Clemson 39. Blitz on. They pick up the blitz. They get the ball to Rogers. Rogers out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Good recognition by Brian Cummings. Threw it to Rogers right where Patrick Sapp came on the blitz. It's the way you beat penetration, you force him to quit quit running guys through. Rogers is 10th reception of the year. Tremendous athlete, two-time Gatorade player of the year, and shows you why everybody in the country had their eyes on him. Good hands, works it in. Again, the speed of the Clemson defense. Clemson has always had outstanding team speed on defense. They have it again here. Third and two. Perhaps four down territory for the Terrapins as well. Cummings on the option. Patrick Sapp, the former quarterback, with a good play off the edge to drop Brian Cummings for a loss of a yard. I don't know if it's better to run away from this guy or run at him. I mean, that's the way you force the run. No hesitation. Come down, make the quarterback make a quick decision. And that time he caught Cummings a little bit by surprise. Well, that will be the final play of the first quarter. It'll be a fourth down decision for Mark Duffner when we come back to Bird Stadium here in College Park, Maryland. 15 minutes of football in the books. Clemson 7, Maryland nothing. On a fourth and four from the Clemson 32-yard line, Brian Cummings and the Maryland offense will go for it. Their field goal kicker, Joe O'Donnell, has a strained right quadricep muscle. And that might be a little bit too much to try a 49-yarder, even with the wind at his back. Cummings with time. Now flushed out of the pocket. And down he goes, back at the 40-yard line. Carlos Curry again. And that Clemson defense comes through to shut down Maryland after the turnover. Man, it's great coverage downfield the secondary really had the answer to this one you hate to just hold a football not even take a shot on fourth down but you, you can only give a defensive line so much time i mean it was apparent that carlos curry was going to get to the quarterback eventually second sack of the ball game for clemson and they get the ball with good field position at their own 40 yard line each team has turned the ball over once green on the option priester with the blocker in front of him into Maryland territory down to the 44-yard line where Mike Settles makes the stop. 
Good block by Lamont Hall at the point of attack. Let's take a look at the Lee Apparel first quarter stats and look at those rushing numbers for the Clemson Tigers. That's awesome. It really is. They've had full control on the offensive line, been able to do everything but throw the football and finish off. Clemson is in the top 20 in the country in ground game, and they're adding to that today. Short yardage this time for Emory Smith. Al Wallace and Johnny Hicks and Cornelius White, the trio of red-shirted Maryland defenders. Clemson has been a slow-starting team offensively, so they have to be pleased with what has happened here thus far. Well, they got to score early. They, they do not have a catch-up offense. The 31-yard line, almost to the 30, the 13-yard scramble keeps the chains moving forward for Clemson. The thing about Nelon Green is an outstanding athlete that if you let him get his confidence up and stay out here and play outside the tackle, the key is that he is threatening the perimeter in this game. And you topple that with the bad turf, and he's going to be in full control unless you get somebody on him quick. Green, Priester, up the middle. Good blocking by Glenn Roundtree and Dwayne Morgan on the right side for a pickup of about four or five. Next Saturday, our ACC Game of the Week will also show these Clemson Tigers against another team that really runs the ball well, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. From Bobby Dodd Stadium down in Atlanta, Georgia, 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Georgia Tech, of course, with a big battle later in the day today against top-ranked Florida State. Let's say that again. Let's call it six as Green wins the option to the short side, and it's a convention of Maryland defenders right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's an attitude deal. That's a statement, and that's what you need. You gotta let people know you're in the ball game. Preacher now, averaging seven yards a crack. You watch this against you. This time, Maryland, Ratcliffe, you see with the penetration, he gets in front of it, allows Hicks and company to come in. They stand up, and this here, this is a finishing touch. This is an attitude. Well, you can see Kevin Coyle, the defensive coordinator for Maryland now, really trying to mix things up and put more pressure on the edges to try and keep Elon Green contained. Green setting up the screen. He's in trouble. Avoid some pressure. And now he'll go down. Tim Watson, the first man to really put a solid pop on Elon Green. A loss back to the 33-yard line. This is what you want. I call it the rat-a-tat-tat. You want to be all over the quarterback, putting Rydell helmets on him, stinging him. See, this is just great pressure. And he's a big defensive lineman wrestling him against a guy who can flat run. Watson comes in, Rydell in the face, then you get your buddies on to get a little peace. Clemson has called a timeout to decide what they want to do here on 4th and 13. Gives us a chance to tell you about First Union presents around the ACC. Some interesting matchups. Virginia down in Texas for a big ball game for ACC Pride. And the biggest game of all this afternoon takes place a little later on when Georgia Tech ventures to Tallahassee to battle top-ranked Florida State. And two of the top rushers in the country, C.J. Williams and Warwick Dunn. Whichever team runs the ball better this afternoon will have a huge advantage in that football game. C.J. Williams. Speaking of teams that run the ball pretty well, Ohio State with the early edge in Columbus against the Boilermakers and Northwestern. How about those cats? Uh, they're going to keep right on rolling. That's uh, an interesting score. Michigan on top early in Big Ten play in Bloomington against the Hoosiers. And our final score uh, of the Oregon 107. Yeah. How about those Indians? I got to ask you a little bit about those Indians and Braves coming up, too. I have to do that. Well, you know, you're you leading know, a little ways. Yeah, well, yeah. I've got to go with my team. Yeah. There's yeah. Hogwood all dressed up again. He'll do anything to get some air time. All right, fourth down. Obviously, with the breeze, they, they can't try a long field goal try. It's just going to be too difficult. They're not a team that likes long yardage plays. What do you think Tommy West they don't is there well in long? I tell you what, I, I would doubt seriously if he was to throw the football and this I'd get it back on that carpet and get the ball in the hands of Priester 10 carries thus far for 70 yards and 
Go to what works. I mean, he had a problem in Georgia last week. He got bad field position. They tried to throw it out. He got it picked off. It's fourth and 13. Kenya Brooks was late getting on the field. Now he is on and set as Green operates from the shotgun. Looking downfield. And it is incomplete. Intended for Marcus Hinton. It would have been a first down, but he couldn't keep his feet and couldn't come up with the football. The Clemson fans screaming about contact downfield. Yeah, that's why I say you better off running the football. They don't do it well, and when you need it in crunch, go to what got you there. And that's Priester. And I'm telling you what, if you get him on the carpet with that option, I think Clemson has a much better advantage. Down to the field and Mike Hogwood. Tommy West was livid about that play. He thought there should have been pass interference. The official just went over to him and told him it was uncatchable pass, and that's why pass interference was not called. Maryland gets it back, trailing 7 to nothing. 11.48 to play here in the second quarter. really sustained anything yet offensively struggling on first down and Ryan Underwood has no place to go here on first down and loses a yard or two gotta stick with it though you know, it's an attitude you, you can't get out of that if you have a couple of bad plays so what you got to make up your mind that you're going to unleash this big offensive line that averages 309 yards per man to take get after people well, in their last ball game, they were off last week, Maryland. They were winners 9-6 to six over Wake Forest, but had some of the same problems on offense trying to get anything consistent going. Underwood inside this time. Jitterbugs his way out to the 35-yard line. He is stacked up there by Chris Jones, the inside linebacker. It'll make it third and long again. Probably because he had a bad play on first down, but it's not its not pretty football. But I'll take the big, strong guys going against the fast guys straight ahead every single time. But you have to unleash, unleash the muscle. I'm curious they have not done more of their little hitch routes on first down out of their run and shoot. But give some credit to that good... Cummings on third down, has time, goes to Lewis, first down Maryland. Run out of bounds by Peter Ford, but the 12-yard pickup sustains the drive. Peter Ford starting uh, today for his twin brother, Andy Ford, who's out, sprained the knee against NC State. This is big-time throw by Cummings. I mean, you're under a lot of pressure. The offense has been stymied. They come out and puts one right on the numbers. Talk about big-time pressure. How about Peter Ford playing one-on-one -on -one against Jermaine Lewis? Well, you know, Peter kind of likes that, though. He'll gamble a little bit more than his brother. I mean, I think you, you'll see him take a bite on one today. Cummings flips it out to Buddy Rogers. Good pursuit by that. Clemson secondary, Liam on Evans up quickly from his free safety spot, stops him right at the line of scrimmage, might even have lost a half a yard. You're going to have a tough time trying to deal with these Clemson Tigers out on the perimeter. They are quick as cats. They come after you. They're well coached, and you can tell that, folks, by the position. Watch the guys come up outside in. They're there in a hurry. you got to run that ball right at them. Talking with Dan Durazio, the offensive coordinator for Maryland. He said you can talk about the Clemson defense in one word, quickness. Yes. Cummings gives it to Rogers straight ahead. He pulls his way through the tackle of Warren Forney into Clemson territory to about the 48-yard line. It'll leave him five yards shy of the first down. Now you're singing my song. You got to come right at people. Clemson has done a good job of that. This is the first time the Terrapins, look at Ward. He got big time Pat Ward, all 308 pounds, crushing up inside. That should be Terrapin football. And if they hope to be successful, they're going to have to get down to basics. 9.45 remaining here, clock moving in the second quarter. Maryland, it seems like, has been in third down plays throughout this first half. Simon goes in motion. Cummings with time, and it's picked off by Patrick Sapp. Sapp slips and falls, but it's another Clemson force of a turnover as Patrick Sapp, the former quarterback, gets his second interception of the season. Great play by Sapp. I mean, he is on today, folks. This is his ball game. Coming to telegraph that the whole way. That was 9-1-1. I'm coming your side. He had two guys break on the football. 
I mean, you you got to expect that to happen. Cummins has got to look off a little better than that. Clemson leading, 9.26 to play in the first half. When he was the Clemson quarterback, interception was a dirty word. Not anymore for Patrick Sapp. Well, look at the eyes of the quarterback. I mean, Brian Cummings is telling the entire world, I'm throwing right. And it's not a quick right. It's going to be about a 15-yard out. And uh, you, you, those old instincts take over. Sap his second interception on the year. Senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, gives Clemson good field position. Emory Smith bounced off Eric Obagu, but there were a lot of other Maryland defenders there. Pickup of about a yard. Credit Tim Watson with the stop. That impressed me right there. I mean, Maryland has a chance that you can get down after a turnover. You can drop your head. The defense charged on the field, and they took uh, Clemson's best shot right up the gut and rejected it. On the ground, they have been pretty well balanced so far, really in, in all categories in terms of number of opportunities and success. The attempt is what I like. They could run the ball. Green on the roll and has a completion on the far side. Making the catch over there was Joe Woods, the transfer from Mississippi. He'll be about a yard or two shy of the first down. Joe Woods got out of it. See, you, know, you look at that turf, keeps his stem right, comes back out, follows right down the trail. That's good football. Nice play, good throw, good catch. Good location on the pass by Neilon Green. Joe Woods was the only guy that had any chance of yeah, touching that. My ball or nobody's ball. Third and one. with great penetration. The junior from Alexandria, Virginia, had 16 tackles in the last ball game against Wake Forest. That's about a half dozen already in this game. Man, that's the pride of T.C. Williams High School. There's the Emory Express, and he's stymied. He's stymied because down at the bottom of that pack, Hicks and Watson. See, they took away that, that, that two-gap position. They clogged it up. You get a good scrape. I like that. It's good defense. Now, Thomas came from the backside yes. to make that good yeah. hustle play. Fourth and one. Thomas or Smith gets it, and I don't think so. At the bottom of the pile, Eric Hicks. It'll depend on the spot, but it looks like he's shy of the first down. You run off the field anyway. I love the confidence. And then maybe the Terrapins can inject some confidence and some guts into their offense, because that's what I'd say if I'm coming off that field. All right, guys, show me something. Because so far, the Clemson Tiger defense has dominated them. Two turnovers by Maryland this afternoon. Clemson turned the first one into a touchdown. This time, they can't even pick up a first down. Good stand by that Maryland defense. Tommy West hopes his defense can force another T.O. His defense is playing well. Cummings remains the quarterback. Let's see if they run the football. On first down, Cummings flushed out of the pocket, and it's dropped on the far side. G. Roy Simon having trouble with the handle. Looked like he started to run before he secured the ball. Yeah, you know, they're, they're anxious. Hey, they realize they haven't scored and <laughs> kissed these guys and... Uh, how many quarters is now, Jack? Well, it's over 150 minutes. 150 minutes. I'll tell you what, man, the pride of Cornell. And see, this is a ball that, yeah, it's a low, but he's capable of making that. But you got to stay on the ball. You got to settle on the football, catch it, then run. Again, the inefficiency on first down is really killing the Maryland offense. They're a team that does not want to be in a lot of long yardage second down plays. Yeah, they've yet to challenge Clemson. They're playing right into Clemson's hands. Stop and play, and it looks like Maryland has called a timeout. First timeout used by the Terrapins this afternoon. And we'll step away halfway through the second quarter. Clemson's first quarter touchdown still standing up. ACC football is brought to you in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine, and by Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering. Depend on Siemens precision thinking. Clemson leading Maryland 7 0. Maryland has it second and 10 at their own 32 yard line. 
Still operating out of that one back offense. Brian Underwood playing the super back role, number 40 right now, alongside of Brian Cummings. Cummings stood tall on that one. Great throw. A little breakdown on the offensive line. Cummings doesn't flinch. That's a good route in lieu of the bad surface. Comes in, shows the numbers right there. I mean, that's a big time throwing catch. Maryland struggling on first down. You see less than three yards in attempt. They need to be closer to four or five to have hopes of moving the football consistently. Dylan Blitz, Carter on the edge. Cummings changes the play. He goes up the sidelines for Lewis, and the wind blew it away from him. Jermaine Lewis was wide open, but that strong breeze behind Brian Cummings sailed it out of his reach. He knew it had to be win. I mean, you know how Lewis can't get to it, then nobody can. Good call, good recognition by Cummings. Watch it. It just takes off. He wasn't close. And you hesitate, once you've had an interception or so, to lay one up. You know, you don't have the confidence to do that, so it takes off on you. We've had gusts this afternoon of better than 20, 25 miles an hour here at Bird Stadium. And it has affected play both ways. Now the second and dime. Clemson count on the blitz. They've got the screen call. Underwood goes nowhere thanks to a great effort by Lamarck Simpson. Yeah, he got by Pat Ward on that one. The offensive lineman on the screen, you got to be an actor. You got to try to play this off a little bit. Pat gets good contact, kind of rides him down. Then you wait. You don't think he's going to come by, but hey, good pursuit by the Tigers. There were a lot of white-shirted Clemson defenders around the football. Lamar Simpson, the sociology major, the senior out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Another third down situation. Roberts going in motion from one side and then back to his original spot as Cummings changed the play. Flushed out of the pocket again. And down he goes. With a three-man rush, Clemson sacks the quarterback and Maryland will have to punt it away. Yeah, three on seven, you get sacked, that's a sin. Raymond White, the sophomore from Clinton, Mississippi, gets the sack. And you ask yourself, well, why? Well, why? Because that secondary is doing a pretty good job downfield. We call this a coverage sack. See, he has nowhere to go. And at this point, he's not looking downfield. He's trying to fend for his life. And that ought not happen. Scott Milanovic, who has punted twice this afternoon, will kick this one with the wind at his back. He hit a 47-yarder into the wind on his previous effort. Doesn't hit this one real strongly. Wyatt catches it at his 20 get loose but can't do so. Clemson will have the football inside its own 25-yard line with 539 to play in the first half. The Tigers still on top. 7-0 the Clemson Tigers with a first quarter score that has stood up as they have really stymied that Maryland offensive attack, particularly on first down. Yeah, they've turned them into a one-dimensional machine, and that won't cut it. Green on the option. No place to go. Tim Brown is right there to shut him down after a gain of only a yard. And now it appears the Maryland defense is starting to become more assertive. Yeah, they've stepped it up. That, that particular play will uh, make their highlight reel. You do a lot of highlight reels all across the country. Look at the rushing difference in this football game. Big sequence here for the Maryland defense because with the strong breeze in the face of Clemson, the Maryland offense would get good field position if Clemson is forced to punt on a three and out scenario. Green from the shotgun to the sidelines, punt by Tony Horn, and he'll have the first down. Got the mismatch they wanted. The middle linebacker, Radcliffe Thomas, covering a wide receiver. That was nice, too. And the key to this for Horn is that when you sense that you have man-to-man -man coverage, the key is to maintain the stem, to push it upfield long enough to put doubt in the linebacker. He does that. Pushes upfield, wins on the route, 
and runs past the marker. That's, that's a good play. 12-yard pass and run. Another Clemson first down with just under five minutes to play here in the first half. When you run the football, you always have the option to throw, and that's what they have. Blitz coming. Green picks it up. His pass is off the mark for Antoine Wyatt. They were muscle. sending Ooh. Mike Settles from the backside, and Nelon felt it and said, I'm going to get rid of it. He put some muscle on that one. Nelon Green out of Lincoln High School in Yonkers, New York. When he was a high school football player, the average crowd was about 250. Today, there's over 40,000 on hand here, just about at Bird Stadium. He's a dead bell. on Raymond Priester. It'll be a loss of a couple. Make it eight tackles for losses now for Mr. Obagu. But he brings some fire. Old tight end, fullback in high school. It's really come on strong. This guy rushed for over 1,000 yards in high school. Makes that transition, comes in. See, that's it. That's the kiss right there. Well, he just stepped right by the blocker who was supposed to put a hat on him. Quickness and speed. Both these teams have been faced with a lot of third and longs in this ball game. Blitz again. Thomas is picked up on the blitz, but not from the outside. Henry Baker, the sophomore cornerback, coming untouched, buries Nelon Green. I appreciate did his job. He really did. Raymond stepped up. He could sense blitz. Watch 27 center screen. Comes up and gets it. That green's holding too long. At that point, forget it. Terrapins come there, bring it. They're rattling the cage right now, folks. They are rattling the cage. Big loss on the play, and now Chris McAnally will have to punt into that strong breeze. Jermaine Lewis waits back at his own 35. McAnally, pretty good kick into that win. Lewis looking for a blocker. And the flag flies on the block by Richard Roberts back at the 35-yard line, negating the seven-yard return. Maryland will be backed up down inside its 25. That kills you. you have you struggling on offense. Special teams, you know, you can't afford to have that helmet on up front. See the numbers. See the numbers. Strike through the numbers. Don't see them. Throw the hands up, guys. Courtney Mosey talking to other members of his crew here this afternoon. We have not had many penalties in this football game. It'll go from the spot of the foul. Lock in the back, above the waist, on the return, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Mark Duffner wants to know who it was, and I don't think he agrees with it anyway. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top 10 Fan Poll, where you, the fan, votes for who's number one. This week's number one team remains the Florida State Seminoles, and pretty much the top part of the list anyway equals what the rest of the country is feeling. You can stop by your local Burger King restaurant to cast your vote for who you think should be number one. First down back at their 25 for Maryland. As time starts to become a factor late here in the first half, Cummings on the roll. He went one way, Mansell Johnson the other, and it's a second and ten. How many times have we said that? Second and ten, big Pat Ward again. It's amazing how these big guys from Maryland can run. Then you set it up, a little dash technique. You like to see him kind of squeeze a little bit, you know, the ball. He's trying to throw in the area. I understand what he's thinking, but the receiver felt the outside and, and didn't extend it. Scott Milanovic, one of the quarterbacks along the sidelines there. Of course, Milanovic started the previous two games with mixed success. Cummings back in there. Again, they roll the pocket. And they get some of the points and speed, but the pass sails over the head of Johnson out at the 43-yard line. And I got to tell you, Tony Planton, Carlos Curry, Lamarick Simpson, and Warren Forney, among others, have really done a great job of pressure. Yeah, well, they're on it. I mean, they are playing high, and they're playing fly. They're going towards the quarterback with reckless abandon. Why? Because they're not being pounded off the ball. If all you're going to do is drop back and, and pass, you play right in the hands of a defensive line. 
No bruises on their body whatsoever. Well, the success of the pressure from just the defensive line has enabled Clemson to put a lot of people into pass coverage. Third and long again, the sixth time they have had third and more than six. Cummings with time. Trying to run for the first down, and he'll be shy. Chris Jones covers him out at the 33-yard line, and Cummings yeah. is just now getting up off the turf. Yeah, see, they're playing Russian roulette football, waiting on one big play. You know, you build on big plays throughout the course of a football game. Now you got to expose your quarterback, who's gutsy. Great protection up front. Terrapins are fighting their guts out, but right now playing right in the hands of Tigers. And you think that wasn't a bullseye shot? Yeah, he saw Chris Jones coming and said, I'm taking the elevator to yeah. the basement. Thank you. Jones had one thing on his mind, decapitation. Milanovic with a little bit of pressure off the side of his foot, but a great bounce for the Terrapins. Look at the roll on this football. Out of bounds, inside the 15, down at the Clemson 12-yard line with 2.12 to play on a 54-yard punt by Scott Milanovic. Yeah. Coming up at halftime here at Bird Stadium, our Mike Cogwood will be among other things, taking a look back and actually, rather than have me tell you what's going to happen at halftime, let's let Mike tell you what's coming up at halftime. That's okay, Jack, you're doing a great job. Go ahead. We will have the Tice brothers, John and Mike, who are back here in honorary captains today. Both were stars here at Maryland in the early 80s. We'll tell you about our Ice House Player of the Week. We'll run through all the statistics and check some scores from around the country. Plus, talk a little bit about this game here. It's been a pretty good first half. Pretty good effort there by Neilon Green as he keeps it on the option. Picks up 12 yards and another Clemson first down. Oh, he's scary. If you put him out on the grass, then advantage goes to Clemson. Look a little banged up on that play. Yeah, hobbling a little bit. Ninth first down of the first half for the Tigers. They will get the football to start the second half, so they will be somewhat conservative here. The important thing, use up the time, and don't you can get a score, fine. But more important not to give the ball back. to wonder about a change in attitude. Neilon Green really hobbling now. Well, we talked they were in a third and 13 in the prior series. They tried to throw, that throw instead of doing this. Get out and get the numbers game. This is twice now they've been able to get the odd man on the advantage versus the option. And with that speed, because of their quarterback, how you have to respect them, they're always a threat. Priest are averaging 100 yards a ball game. Raymond has 92 in the first half. Thomas, but help from Al Wallace knocks him down along with Cornelius White back at the 41 yard line. What a play by Ratcliffe. What an athletic play. I mean, this young man, this is the, what the Terrapins are all about. 46. He comes in, and you're watching this again. Green, still kind of smart with the injury. He gets beat. He's down. He gets back up. He goes after him once again. Holds on until his troops can get there to help him out. Ratcliffe Thomas, who the last two seasons. You see Elon Green hobbling around and he may get a quarterback change here in the closing moments of the first half. But Radcliffe Thomas 241 tackles in his first two years in a Maryland uniform and he is up around the 70 mark already this year. So more than 300 tackles for the junior out of Alexandria, Virginia, criminal justice major. Not Big by inside linebacking standards, only goes about 235, and really when he started his career, he was about 220. I watched him in high school, just an exceptional player. But T.C. Williams, 28th straight start, 15 times he's led the team in tackles, and he's a leader. You know, and he went through some tough times. Uh, it was a laughing stock, Maryland's defense, and when you when you're able to hang through that and build, he's one of the guys that's relishing now in their success. Solomon, the fifth-year senior, the graduate student, will come into the ball game. Neilon Green hobbled over the last couple of plays, and so they'll bring in the veteran Solomon, who has played on and off at that quarterback spot. An excellent runner. Now you watch the exchanges. See if that offensive line can protect him. Options. 
Solomon Creek. Hello, Al Wallace and Tim Brown. You come off the bench after sitting for 28 minutes, and Tim Brown says, taste the turf. Well, that's why you want to show your affection. Defensive guys like to embrace you, and this is the way you do it. They play it well. Play well at the point of attack. Al Wallace does a good job, and again, you want to get those hats on. It wasn't a rat attack tack, but you did get some, some presence. Maryland has two timeouts remaining. I'm a little surprised they didn't think of using one there and maybe getting the ball back. Shooting one in back. Quarterback draw Solomon will get it back to the 46 yard line shy of the first down Maryland will call a timeout now with 24 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Yeah they, they lost some ticks. They definitely had some time. Not that Doc or I want to coach from the box but when you see Louis Solomon out there you realize they're probably not going to throw the ball on third down you, yeah. you might try and save a few ticks and maybe get something to happen for you in the closing second. I also think Coach definitely you know he recognizes that right now his defense is the emotional charge you see Green going in get a few uh, early moments inside the locker room possibly to tape it up or put some ice on the injury could be a hip or, or a thigh. But sometimes you just want to get in at half. You, you don't want anything else bad to happen to you. And you rally your troops. You're still in this football game. I mean, we're, we're bringing it strong, but they only sit down 7 zip. But the point goes back to your earlier point. This is a stigma now. They haven't scored against Clemson. I, and I said this in the open. I believe that Clemson feels like they can come down here and they own this place. And that's what you got to stop. This is coming up on 10 consecutive quarters without points from Maryland against the Clemson defense. They'll try and get Jermaine Lewis maybe to spark this crowd and his team with a last second punt return. He'll drop back in single safety awaiting the McAnally punt. Hey, what, Jack? This is an important ball game, Doc, because this is the second last home game as well for Maryland, a place where they have tasted much success here in 95. And that final home game is against a very formidable foe, the Virginia Cavaliers. So they really felt like they had to get this one. And they do. If I'm Buddy Rogers, I go in at halftime. I go right up to Coach Duff and I say, give me the ball. Lewis will make the fair catch, but Clemson will keep the ball. Richard Roberts trying to come in and pressure McAnally along with Chad Scott, and they both got the punter. Yeah, aiming point. You got to go where the ball will be. Not where the punter is, but where the ball will be. And if you leave your feet, you're doomed. Well, roughing the kicker on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, 15-yard walk-off, so they'll get the ball into Maryland territory, Will Clemson, at about the 40 of the Terrapins. It's a good call. Good call. 17 seconds left. You got Louis Solomon, who's only attempted three passes on the season. Good but time with a for guy a like play. Yeah. Good time Antoine for Wyatt, why not? Right. Good time for a gadget play too. You have nothing to lose now, but I would definitely try to get it down in the red area. Four wide receivers as Solomon rolls right. Here's it downfield, and Wyatt was open, but the pass was short. Mm -hmm. Antoine Wyatt Solomon slipped pass. between the seams of the zone, and that would have been a big pickup, would have put them into field goal range. You're right. I'd come right back and do it again. And we hear so much about prevent defense and things of that nature, but sometimes it's just things just happen. You're starting to, to, to keep you on the quarterback and you're trying to play areas of the field instead of playing people. 11 seconds left. They have two timeouts. They have one timeout left. So they can stop the clock before it runs away from them. Now they'll send a trio of receivers to the right of Solomon. He'll go down at the 32-yard line. Clemson uses its last timeout with three seconds to play. Now it would be a 49-yard field goal try by Jeff Save, who has hit a 47-yarder this year, but I doubt they'll kick into that strong breeze. Now I would throw this one, throw it up for grabs, take a shot. You get three receivers to one side. I'd work the guy on the backside one-on-one. -on -one. 
and give him a shot at it. That breeze blowing into the face of Clemson, gusting at more than 20 to 25 miles an hour here this afternoon. That's Rick Stockstill, one of the co-offensive coordinators, talking to Louis Solomon. Tommy West has an interesting staff in which he has co-coordinators on both sides of the football. He uses Clyde Christensen, mm -hmm. who used to coach here at Maryland, along with Rick Stockstill on the offensive side. That's and then defensively, Clyde. he uses Miles Aldridge and Ellis Johnson. It's interesting. I was looking over at Coach Christensen before the game, and I'm having to take a double take once again every time I see him because I'm so accustomed to seeing him in the Maryland outfit. You look over here, and he's in... For Maryland fans, he would be considered enemy colors and uh, doing a good job. Final play of the first half. They'll send three receivers to the left. As Solomon checks the situation, Tony Horn is the lone receiver to the right. Woods, Hinton, and Wyatt to Solomon's left. And he is throwing right for Horn. Deflected into the air. Wyatt's got it for a touchdown. There is a flag on the play. They used the volleyball play. Go to the guy on the single side. But there was a nice setup. I think. Offsides on the defense. Wow. Touchdown. touchdown Clemson. A 32-yard touchdown pass. And I think. The tip by Tony Horn was intentional. Might very well have been, but he's the guy you go to. Go to the guy on the low. He gets up with the hop, tough the tail, just good football. Get your people in position. You got to wall guys off defensively. They don't get it done. It goes back to the roughing of the punter by Chad Scott. Save's extra point makes it 14 nothing Clemson. As we go to the locker room at halftime, let's get one more look at the big play. Watch Wyatt come all the way across the field. Yeah, he takes the seam. You think if he was looking for the football, he'd be a little more shallow. He's watching the hit. I'm sure they go over this. That's a good play. It really is. Down to the sidelines, Mike Hogwood with Tommy West. I'll tell you, Tommy's smiling going to the locker room. Uh, Louis Sullivan's not supposed to be able to throw the football. I'm not, I'm not sure he did. Sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good. I th what about the first half? Your defense is playing awful good right now. Our defense is playing great. Uh, we're playing with emotion. We're playing tough. They're, they're bothering us some with blitzes uh, and in the second quarter. The wind's really a factor right now. What do you tell these guys at halftime? You just hit on a big play. The emotion's running high. What do you know? Well, I think that was critical because I thought Maryland had the emotion because of the way their defense was playing. We got to go in, come back out, and execute. All right, Tommy, we'll let you get to the locker room. Clemson Tigers are up 14 to nothing on that last second touchdown. We'll be back with our halftime activities from College Park, Maryland in just a moment. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By your hometown Carolina Dodge dealer and the new Dodge. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your Carolina Jeep and Eagle dealer. By Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And by your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. The Clemson Tigers playing with a lot of emotion here today. Their running game is rolling. One concern, though, quarterback Nelon Green limped off the field before the end of this first half. We'll wonder if he can be able to go in the second half. Be checking on that shortly. Anyway, the Clemson Tigers are up 14 to nothing. It's time now for our Jefferson Pilot scoreboard as we check some of the other scores around the country being played early on this Saturday afternoon. Georgia out in front of Kentucky. Ohio State, a touchdown up on Purdue. That's in the second quarter. South Carolina leads Vanderbilt by a touchdown. Colorado and Iowa State are tied in the first quarter. It's Wisconsin being shut out right now by Northwestern in a battle of top 25 teams. Syracuse, a field goal over West Virginia. Virginia Tech and Rutgers, a big game in the Big East. And Army over Boston College, 35-0 in the second quarter. Texas and Virginia are scoreless. That is very early in the game. Cincinnati 
over Memphis, 14 nothing again. That is in the first quarter. Well, you know, one of our guests was uh, Mike Tyson. I'll throw it back up now to Jack and Doc. And Mike was wondering if we were keeping Doc in line. Says they stayed together, played for a year on the uh, Redskins. And I said, we're trying hard, Jack, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Well, know? there are certain <laughs> things in life, Mike, that are just impossible to do. And keeping Doc in line is certainly one of those. Start talking about keeping in line, when we look at the Ford halftime stats from the first half, it was the offensive and defensive lines of Clemson that controlled this football game. They really did. We talked about guys in the box, the front seven on defense, and that offensive line of Clemson, 134 yards on the ground. Now, in Rodgers' behalf of Maryland, he didn't have any touches. There were not very many running plays by Maryland in the first half. A turnover early in the ball game set up the first touchdown. They did it primarily on the ground with Raymond Priester, and Priester then finished off the 32-yard drive. Fine back when you put Look at Emory Smith, the fullback. Uh, these just, just trio has really been exceptional in the backfield for the Tigers. I credit the offensive line, though. They've had an attitude early on that was unmatched until the Terrapins got angry. Maryland then sort of got themselves going defensively. Really looked like they were taking control late in the first half. They have a roughing the kicker penalty that keeps the drive alive. It didn't seem that big at the time, Doc. Well, we didn't think so. The backup quarterback comes in the ball game. You think, well, they'll just kind of get out of it. Well, they did more than get out of it. They went to the old rocket screen, we used to call it. Three receivers on one side. You throw back to the trailer. Now, Jack, I have to concur with you. I think that was a design play. He gets it up. <laughs> why it finishes. Touchdown, Tigers. One of the reasons why Doc and I both thought that was a design play was the fact that Antoine Wyatt from the snap of the ball ran directly to the spot yeah, he did. where Tony Horn ended up volleyballing that football. How often did you work on that in practice and then have it happen in a game is far and few in between. And it was a big play for Clemson. They lead 14 to nothing and they'll have the football to start the second half when we return to College Park, Maryland. Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the tiger. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By your local Mazda dealers. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide by your Carolina Ford dealer, home of five of America's top 10 selling vehicles. And by Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. Back here at College Park, Maryland, along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood, Jack Corgan, glad you could join us. Clemson leading Maryland in the ACC Game of the Week by two touchdowns. What will Maryland try and do in the second half? Well, Mark Duffner is on the sidelines with Mike Hogwood. Jack, Duff, what do you have to do now to get back in this game? We just got to settle down and play our game right now. We put our defense in some tough places with a, a fumble where they got field position and scored, and after the block, roughing the punter, put them in tough position right there. We got to settle down. We got to get a little offense generated, continue to keep our poise and put pressure on them in defense. Any changes from what you were doing in first half? We just got to execute better. That comes down. To, we got to move the chains right now and get the ball in the end zone. All right, Jack. All right, Mike, thanks very much. And you know, from an emotional perspective, any Mark Duffner team, <laughs> we'll have that <laughs> up a notch or two here in the second half. No, they won't like that at all. But it, it comes down to really a, a, a philosophical difference in how you want to approach offensive football. And Duff has been successful. They've been able to spread people out with this run-and-shoot offense. But in our last meeting with Carolina here, we saw him attack more up front. They ran the ball where they had better balance. He's got to get back to that in the second half or this dog will not get bring the bone back. And here's one of the problems that you see the 10 straight quarters now without scoring against Clemson. On the last seven first down plays by Maryland, six of them were for no gain, the other one for minus two yards. When they're in second and long, they're going to struggle. Yeah, and it doesn't matter who's at quarter. Back, whether it's Milanovic or Cummings, I think you got to make an, a, a, an attempt to get your offensive lineman involved in the game. And it's not pass block, it's run block. Brad Rhodes will kick it off with a strong breeze to his back. He'll send it down towards Antoine Wyatt and Undra Williams. Clemson deferred after winning the toss of the coin, so they'll get the ball. Maryland taking the win, the strong breeze at its back for Maryland in the third quarter. Rhodes kick, a knuckleball, fumbled by Wyatt. He'll pick it up at a 
his seven. Finds the seam and takes it out to the 26-yard line. One more look at that final play of the first half that gave Clemson its two-point or two-touchdown lead. The man highlighted is Antoine Wyatt when Doc and I were talking about it being a planned play. So you see him going right down the gut. He's not playing the seam. He's going over in that vicinity. That has to tell us that is pre-designed play. That if you can't catch it, then you pop it up in the field and hope that a guy like Wyatt ends up with the ball in his hands. And that's exactly what happened. Louis Solomon still the quarterback as he gives it to Emory Smith. We'll try and get an update. Mike Hogwood will check on the physical condition of Nilon Green who hobbled off the field at the end of the first half. Let's go down to the field of Mike Hogwood. Well, the word on Nilon Green, he has a mild ankle sprain. He can play if he has to. What the Clemson coaches are hoping, if they maintain a two-touchdown lead, you won't see Nilon. It'll be Louis Solomon. Well, it will change the perspective for the Maryland defense and the Clemson offense with Solomon, the quarterback. Not the passer that Green is. Louis is a great runner, though, on the pitch to Priester. Raymond Priester over 100 yards on the day with that first down run out near the 40-yard line. Johnny Hicks peeled back to make the stop. You know, sometimes it just helps to have the right play called against the wrong defense. This time, Maryland on a hard charge slant. See those guys down line, but they slant down. You see Hicks, you lose him, and now you've got a number advantage. you got one more guy out in the number system, and that time Clemson picked up on it. Good call against the right defense. Raymond Priester averaging better than eight yards a carry, 101 yards on the afternoon. Solomon options right side. Good defense that time by number 90, Eric Kicks, to turn the play back in. Solomon for just short yardage. Playing the option a lot is by position. Are you in the right spot? Are the shoulders square? Are you forcing the back to bow? And if you do that, you allow to get the number count to your advantage. See the shoulder square there? That's an outstanding play by Eric Hicks because that way you put the back in no man land. What decision does he make? That time he made a bad one. Good defense by the Terrapins. Out of the shotgun. Priester on the draw play. Chad Scott hit him. Priester falls forward to about the 43 or 44 yard line. It'll set up a third and long for the Tigers. Yeah, good second level play by the linebackers. Big Robert Jackson, 72 white for the Clemson Tigers out of H.D. Woodson. He had a nice block on that. See, if you're able to take on that initial defender, that time he does an outstanding job. He cuts him right off at the seam, takes the ball out of the play, but the linebackers come in. Tim Brown, Ratcliffe doing a great job for the Terrapins. Clemson a little better on third down. Third and long. the pitch to Emory Smith goes incomplete and Clemson will have to pump the football you could see that they telegraphed that play not as smooth uh, Doc will we see Maryland really get aggressive on the line of screen you're going to see now. running linebackers do a lot more now you want to put pressure on this young man watch Bradcliffe it's like somebody shot him out of a cannon see that's what you got to do and you need to get hits hits on the quarterback Chris McAnally will punt it to Jermaine Lewis into that strong breeze. Again, Maryland, 10 men on the line of scrimmage. They had a roughing the kicker penalty before. This time they peel back. Wynn stands that punt up. Takes a favorable bounce for the Tigers just inside the Maryland 25-yard line. That's where the Terrapins will put it in play after the 33-yard punt. 12-22 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson leading by 14. Clemson Tigers still pitching that shutout against the Maryland Terrapins. Maryland has not scored since the game in the 1992 season. Brian Cummings, his first offensive play of the second half with Buddy Rogers as the lone setback. Rogers gets the call and fights over left tackle for a couple. Hey, all right. That's a start in the right direction for you Terrapin fans. And then Clemson will take a look at this now. I mean, their defense just played extraordinary in the first half. They were all over the field. They were, they were rushing well. The three-man rush is what blew my mind. I mean, that 
shows you the kind of athletes that Clemson has. I mean, they were able to overcome a five on two. Brian Underwood checks in for Rodgers at tailback. And he gets the call. Trying to turn the corner, but Patrick Sapp cut him off. Underwood fights it out to the 30-yard line. When we did the Clemson-Virginia game several weeks ago, Virginia, with their tight ends, were able to keep Patrick Sapp out of that football game. I don't know if he made a tackle in that game, but with the little guys, yeah, he's controlling tough. the perimeter. Watch the helmet placement. Do you see that? Mark Motley with a big block on the edge because, one, they're running the football. Two, you allow your big guys to get off some steam, and it's intimidating. You can't intimidate people pass block. Third down and six. with a long yardage situation on third down. Cummings has time, and Jermaine Lewis couldn't hang on to it with good coverage from Brian Dawkins out around the 40-yard line, and the Clemson defense rises up again. Doc was all over that one. I mean, this is a good football player. I, I really like him. He's a tough guy. He will hit you fourth and tackles for the Clemson Tigers. See, he breaks on the ball. And see, he, whether he got a hand on that, it's just the fact that you have a swipe makes the receiver blink. That's a big-time play by a guy who I think is going to play a lot of football on Sundays. Scott Milanovic to punt it away to Antoine Wyatt. will field it at his 25. Trying to turn the corner, but there's an illegal block, and Wyatt goes down right at the 25. Buddy Rogers and Radcliffe Thomas on the stop, but a block in the back will put Clemson inside its 15-yard line. Yeah, Damon Ward, that's a no-no. Very simple, son. Helmet in front, see the numbers, strike a blow. Don't see him, throw your hands on up. On the run back. Block in the back above the waist. On the receiving team, 10 yards. First down. It'll go back to about the 15-yard line. We have not had many penalties on the day, but quite a few of those penalties that we have had have come during special teams play. And one of them, a huge one, the roughing the kicker penalty that kept wow. the Clemson drive alive in the closing seconds of really the first did. half. You know what happens, Jack, is that kids, you're enthusiastic. You want to get down and help your squad, but you got to play smart. Louis Solomon still at quarterback. As we told you, Elon Green sprained an ankle late in the first half. They toss it back to Priester. That's why they are doing so well on first down. They get it into the hands of Raymond Priester, and the 220-pound sophomore out of Allendale, South Carolina, just keeps adding to what are very fine season numbers. Man, let's see if we can get this bunter in at left tackle. So this is extraordinary play for a left tackle. Keep the feet, 280-pounder. Sophomore out of Wellington, Delaware. And this guy right here, I like him a lot. He's tenacious. He fights all the time. I and mean, when you play that left tackle, see, grass in the helmet. See, Jack, a lot of guys, you as a receiver, you would, you would take that out. Oh, when you I'm take it out, tackle. waiting on the camera shot. Here's a guy that doesn't care. <laughs> and that was a nice reach block. <laughs> They're measuring for the first down, and it is picked up by Raymond Priester. Priester now with over 700 yards on the season. Among the top rushers in the conference has not gotten a lot of notoriety because of the big years for C.J. Williams and, of course, Warwick Dunn of Florida State. But Priester is a load with pretty good giddy-up once he turns the corner. He really is. No, they have a great backfield, and I'm really high on Emory Smith. Uh, we're talking about a guy I think is a future star. And Priester, again, played fullback last year. Oldest of 10 kids, so he's, this guy's a leader. Whether or not he wanted to be, he's a leader. The family to the dinner table too with the 220 pounds. Yeah, but you had to eat last if you're the oldest. You the Priester squares the shoulders, takes it over the 30-yard line before he's stacked up. Chad Scott, the final man there after Al Wallace and Tim Brown were there. Big Emory Smith trying to lead the charge, the fullback going out. Maryland plays as well. They really do. You see, that's just good defense right there by Tim Brown. You mentioned the shoulder square. I mean, when you square up and play this game is the way it's supposed to be played. Chad Scott comes in with a nice bolo hit. You know he's discouraged. But with that unnecessary roughness, it costs the chairman seven points. There's Emory Smith. Finds running room. Smith has space in the Maryland territory. Finally run down by Tim Brown at 
the Maryland 36-yard line, a 33-yard run by Emory Smith. Our DeMet All-State linebacker out of Pensacola, Florida, gained over 1,000 yards as a senior. He's a fullback. Boy, nice block up front. As center Putman, nice block at the point of attack. And see, this guy can motor. He's 250, still growing, and can play the game of football. We're the wide receivers. So you see people downfield. It's just good football play. This guy's got some wheels. Clemson really trying to take command of this game. They're leading by 14 and on the move again. Back to the tailback, Lamont Pagisu gets his first carry of the afternoon. And Pagisu started a lot of ball games last year. Got a couple. Sophomore out of Thomasville, South Carolina. Well, you know, when Tommy West returned to Clemson, his plan was to get the Tiger offense back to what they do well. He wanted them to be more balanced, yeah. but he wanted that running game to return. I'm going to be balanced. I'll take the run first. Solomon, play fake. Looks downfield, has Wyatt. Slips out of bounds as he tried to turn up field at the Maryland 28-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. We're down in the slippery part of the field. Hogwood made a good point about the tarp and the seams in the tarp. And here you watch at the end of the reception, watch the feet go. So now you're on that slippery slide. Do you remember that? Do you ever play on that? Slip and slide, yeah. You know, slip oh, and slide, sure. you put yeah. the water hose and you go yeah, down. That's right. Someday you slip and slide on that football field for miles. <laughs> play in the mud. Third and short. See if they go to the big fullback again. Back to Priester. Smith leading the way, and Priester stretches forward to get the first down. AJ Johnson played it well, though. He closed well. Huge challenge for the Terrapin defense. They've really been the backbone of this team thus far. I mean, they played with real fire. They've met the challenge, gave up one big play. But this backfield, Smith, Priester, well, Smith Green before he went down, man. Right. It's rough. Smith and Priester shared the fullbacking duties a year ago. Now they share the backfield duties. And there's Emory Smith. Good down block by Bunder in the left tackle to give Smith space to the outside. Good eyes. You know, the Terrapins, you, you call this, Jack. Would the Terrapins blitz a little more? Would they stunt a little bit more with a backup quarterback? The answer is yes. But the offensive line picked it up. Big Will Young. Strong guy. One of the strongest linemen they have. Now they are dominating the ball game right now. 17 to 5, the difference in first downs in this game. And Putman and Roundtree, the guys have been there. They're playing some ball up front. Solomon on the option. Keeps it himself, and oh, did he pay for that? Al Wallace with a big time hit at the 19 yard line. Again, Clemson will be in a third and short situation. Yeah, I think that was a rat a tat tat. Now, this is what you play for. Defensive guys, I mean, they want to get some skull. They want to rattle the skull. And there it is. See, whenever you see the hit go back, I mean, the guys dream about getting a flush hit on the quarterback. Is that Hogwood again? Different look for Mike right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ninja Hog. <laughs> Eric Hicks took a piece of that pop from Al Wallace as well, and he'll go to the sidelines. That's why we had the momentary stop and play. Maryland trying to do anything they can to get their team going. But Clemson has really made this a subdued crowd here at Bird Stadium. Option Solomon. Nowhere to go. Good job at the corner. Mario Chavez, the redshirt junior, playing a defensive end. Forced Solomon back inside and sets up a fourth down play. Strong call was. I mean, you know, Clemson's been running the ball well, and here Maryland says, no way. They deny it. That Tim Watson stud. He really is. <laughs> Jeff Save will be on to try a 36-yard field goal. He is four of six from inside of 40 yards. Into that strong wind. And he's got it. Tim Save with a 
36-yard field goal extends Clemson's lead to 17 midway through the third quarter here at Bird Stadium. We'll be back with more football. Clemson dominating back after these messages from your local ACC station. Well, the Maryland band trying to get things going for their hometown team, but it has not gone well because the guys in white have been dominating here this afternoon. 66 yards on that drive for the Jeff Sauve 36-yarder. Sauve managing to bang it through despite the strong breeze. Yeah, big kick. Jeff Sauve will kick it away. Look at the wind stand that ball up. Ball is caught. Did he make a fair catch call? I couldn't tell. <laughs> Number 42, Eric Abagu, looked like he was going to make a fair catch call. That's what Clemson thought. In any event, Maryland will get the ball on the 30-yard line. Wendy Voigt, the J.P. Sports coordinating producer, watching today's game at home with her new baby boy, Will Voigt, born this past Monday, weighing in at 7 1⁄2 pounds. And we want to send out our congratulations to Wendy and Mike as uh, baby Will is as doing fine. Crafton, I like that. Maryland with just five first downs in the football game. Needing three scores now with a quarter and a half to go. And they give it to Buddy Rogers on first down. And right now, whether they're running the ball or throwing the ball, the guys in white are dominating first down play. Carlos Curry having his best game of the season, perhaps. He came into this game with just 11 tackles on the season. Yeah, and one sack. But at least Maryland now is challenging. I mean, you got to knock these guys. You got you want to slow them down, pound on them for a bit. The only problem with that, Doc, they're going to run out of time. Well, if you get one in this quarter, you're still in position. Cummings tosses it to Rogers. Tries to turn up field, breaks the tackle, gets it out to the 38-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards shy of a first down. See, I still believe it's a deal with an attitude. You have to know that when it all boils down, that you're tougher than the next guy you're playing. And right now, Clemson came out and started the game that way, and Maryland's now still trying to pick it up. Really only one score out of turning this game in, into a challenging ball game. That overall team quickness of Clemson has been very evident on the defensive side of the football this afternoon. Third down, you almost wonder if Maryland starts getting into four down situations. And Mansell Johnson, third down conversion into Tiger territory to the 42-yard line. Good protection in a 20-yard game. Yeah, great protection. But see, it's still an attitude. Still ran the ball. A couple of plays. You start trying to soften things up. And then you turn it over to these receivers. Here Johnson comes up, stop, nice stop, squares up, looks the ball in, and then you try to get more. Good hit, too, but Clemson, they, even if they get you downfield, they put a tattoo on you. Oh, Dawkins and Evans in particular, and yeah. Dexter McLean, really, all those secondary guys. Hitmen. Yeah, they like the contact. Showing blitz, but sending just three. Cummings flares it out to Buddy Rogers. Rogers stacked up by Patrick Sapp. And the pursuit will finish him off at about the 37-yard line. They pick up about five on the play. He was fighting for it, though. See, you, you hope it's contagious. You know, when you see a guy that starts to fight his guts out, here on first down, Maryland finds a little more success. Nice swing, good throw and catch. Now watch the finish. See, this Tiger's over. This big sap. See, this guy's coming in. I like the white shirts, because, see, they don't stop. They keep coming, trying to get a piece. Make it more like a four-yard gain, second and six. Thompson rolling nine men up close to the line of scrimmage. Simon went in motion as Cummings flushed out of the pocket. Down he goes again. Flushed out of the pocket by Warren Forney and finished off by Tony Planton. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Clemson defense. Man, that D-line just coming up front. There you see the trio. Those defensive linemen, though, have a, well, the reason these numbers are so low. The numbers are low because this D-line has taken over the game. That was a good example. See, they got back into that old pass, 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 and you go backwards, backwards, backwards. All 
the sacks today for Clemson have come from the front line. Third and long. That's been the story of the day for the Maryland offense. Cummings steps up, has a man, and finds Jermaine Lewis. First down, Maryland. Inside the Clemson 25. Big play. Big play by Lewis. Got shaken up a little early on in the second quarter. Here's a guy that's a competitor. He's got the great speed. There he's a change of direction. Works the turf. Shows the numbers. Just floats in. Catches with the hands. Kind of loses it. Holds on. And then the Tigers converge. Good play. Clock winding down here in the third quarter. 3.45 to play. Maryland with the wind at its back in this period. Then has <laughs> Raymond White there to knock him down. I love defense. You guys on defense get to play with such an attitude. I mean, McCorry, he comes in. He's an old defensive back. A guy at great speed. So you're running right in their strength now. You want to find the Tigers? Go outside. Give them a chance to run. And they run you down. You got backside guys coming at it. Raymond White flying down the line of scrimmage. They want to run. You play right in their hands. Antoine Wyatt and Tony Horn having fun here this afternoon. Their team leading by 17. Maryland trying to get on the board. Out pass Simon, but only for a couple of yards on the play. Good coverage by Leamon Evans. He and G. Roy Simon talking about the Medicare proposal now in Congress. Oh, yeah. One had one opinion, one had the other, so they separated them. <laughs> oh, boy. Tony Platten got up, got his hands up on that play. It's fun to play defense, man, when you when you can just tee off and you can run. It's not so much fun when you got a helmet under your chin. People double-teaming you, knocking you off the ball. Ryan Cummings again has to convert a third down play. He's done it twice on this drive with completions to Simon and Lewis. Quick screen, Buddy Rogers didn't have much help, and he's going to be five yards shy of the first down. This, in essence, folks, is a running play. You know, Maryland has a number of different ways to try to get the ball out like the run. But again, speed. Clemson Tigers defense. And you watch them. See, they're just in good position. Watch the angle. That's nice. If you get beat, get beat inside. And that's exactly what happened. Brad Pope with a good tackle yeah, in the nice. open field. Very Joe nice. O'Donnell is on to try a 37-yard field goal. Six of eight on the season. He's had a strained right quadricep. And this kick is way off the mark. So Maryland moves it, but comes up empty. Yeah, that's their best drive. Best drive, you think you want to try to build on that, but Clemson's rolling. Tommy West came up here trying to maintain the domination Clemson has enjoyed against Maryland the last couple of seasons. They are 207 away from 11 consecutive quarters of shutting out Maryland. Luis Solomon has been the quarterback throughout this second half after the Neilon Green injury late in the second quarter. Five-yard pickup. Raymond Priester on his way to a huge day. Oh boy, this is highlight material here. Watch Emory Smith, folks. The bam block right there. That's the lead. And then you got a back that lowers the body but keeps the legs running. Now you got guys bouncing off and out like bubblegum machine. And that's when you know you're about to win. That's when you can sense it, pounding the football. Priester comes up a little gimpy, 147 yards on the day for Priester. First down dive by the fullback, Emory Smith. Out close to midfield, he'll pick up four or five there. Attending to the right ankle of Raymond Priester. You can see how well the tailbacks have performed today, but not a bad day as well for Emory Smith with over 70 yards. So more than 200 yards out of the fullback and tailback today. Quarter to go. With a quarter to go. And Maryland has played well defensively. Clemson came in 16th in the country running the football, and they're not going to diminish that mark at all. 
to Lamont Pegues. Pegues is stood up by Chad Scott. Nice tackle in the open field by Chad Scott, the junior cornerback. Let's go down to the field in Mike Hockley. The injury to Raymond Priester doesn't appear to be serious right now. They're going to take his sock off, retape the ankle, and then uh, hopefully he'll be able to go back in. Uh, the trainer told me he thought it was a mild spark. Final minute of the third quarter. Maryland took the wind in the third period, but really had only one drive in which they utilized it. Two possessions in the quarter. One was a three and out. Here's a third and four. Solomon on the option. Has space. Fumbles the football. And Maryland recovers. Looking for a big play. The Maryland defense forces the turnover in the closing seconds of the third period. Well, if you're a Maryland fan, you just got to love this defense. I mean, they've been bend a little bit, but no break, fighting their guts out. Now the only way they can win is to get the ball back or score on defense. This option, this machine is rolling for the Tigers. It looks like business as usual. There's Radcliffe Thomas with the knock. That's smart defense. You realize you got to make a play. Radcliffe comes up. Hines comes in with the recovery, and the Terrapins now have a chance. Andre Hintz, the junior out of Asheville, North Carolina, with the fumble recovery. Maryland gets it back with 21 seconds to play here in the third period. Cummings gives it to Underwood, trying to turn the corner. in the football game so far. The Maryland offense actually has been pretty balanced. They just haven't been very successful. Yeah, yeah good point. Dawkins, what a football play. That's the final play of the third quarter. Maryland will need a big comeback because Clemson has a three-score advantage. 15 minutes of football to play. Clemson 17, Maryland nothing. We'll be back with more from College Park after this. Well, a day that started with a heavy downpour. The sun has come out momentarily behind the clouds, but not much joy here in Mudville. Maryland down 17 to nothing. <laughs> Mudville. That's fine. Second and nine for Brian Cummings. With time. Looking downfield for Mansell Johnson into that breeze, and Johnson fights for the football with a Tiger defensive back, and they say interception, Clemson. Brian Dawkins had a better grip on the ball than Mansell Johnson. Yeah, he had a lot of shoving on that play. This should be interesting, but again, either way you look at it, number game favors Clemson. Two Tigers, one Terrapin. If I'm Clemson, I'll take those odds any day. Good ball fake, but not much forward. See, at that point, that's just strength. That is just pure strength of Brian Dawkins. Yeah, he, he took, took it away. Ball away. You know, he took it away. Can't credit him anything else other than strength on this one. Third Maryland. turnover of the game for Maryland. Maryland has the speed. The 4-2, 4-3 guys, but the 180 against 195 and a defensive player. Tigers going to win that battle. And that dusting breeze in the face of Brian Johnson really stood that pass up. Brian Cummings, excuse me, towards Mansell Johnson. Emory Smith on first down. A couple of tough yards out near the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at our third quarter Lee Apparel stats, and you can see the ground game has been preeminent for Clemson. Yeah, it's a slugfest now. And it's slugging. Maryland getting slugged. <laughs> I'm telling you. And Maryland has to worry, of course, about that shrinking clock. Yeah, the clock's going to kill them now at this point. You go for a big one following a turnover. Well, not, not, not the way Tommy West is operating right here, particularly with Solomon at quarterback. Although he can make big plays just with his feet. Like this. Louis Solomon out over the 40 for a Clemson first down. 24-yard pickup as the fifth-year senior makes up for the fumble his last carry. Well, he's talking about football, Jack. He hit this right on the head. Hit an offensive line. You know, good down block, good straight. Now watch the footwork. Boy, that's fancy. He walks it up. I love receivers downfield and block. It's wide and it's in, sticking his head in it, trying to make it happen. Luis Solomon, one of the grad students playing for Clemson, a Dean's List student in special education. 
Jeffrey Smith, the ball carrier, straight ahead. You know, it's funny you think of big cruising football players, and while Louis Salomon doesn't necessarily fit that category, I think it, it is wonderful to see a, a, a young man who has had good success as a college athlete deciding he's going to spend his life's work helping people with special needs. That's wonderful. It, it really is. Giving back, being unselfish, and a leader. I mean, the guy's a quarterback, he's a leader. Well, he was one of 24 people selected for the Arthur Ashe Award last year around the country. Smith fumbles the football, and Maryland recovers. Eric Hicks comes up with the turnover. The Maryland defense is not quitting. Now, if you can suit Duffner up on offense, put him in fullback, I think Maryland will score some points. But unfortunately, they can't do that. So I just love this guy, man. I mean, he's a tough guy, loves the game, he's enthusiastic, and, and West, too. I mean, Tommy is just as aggressive, just has a different mannerism. This is football. We talk about the rat-a-tat-tat. Now, watch Smith. You know I like Emory, but nothing <laughs> like a Rydell helmet on a big skin. It's going to pop it out. Terrapins are playing well enough to be in this ball game defensively. Tim Brown with the hat on the ball to force the turnover recovered by Eric Hicks. And did you see Radcliffe Thomas trying to exhort Brian Cummings on to get something going with the offense? Cummings on the roll. Pass time. Mansell Johnson wide open and he fell down. It was a super play fake and Mansell Johnson couldn't stay on his feet. Oh, I love that call. I mean, I, it's amazing that you can get Clemson on play action since they're not running that well. But you're talking about coming out of the box. There's big Pat Ward against you. Ward shields it off. He pushes you. He's liable to push you all the way to Baltimore. And then the turf. So you got to get your feet stable. You got to be stable. And it's tough. Tough on a wet track. But you don't have a theory. Some guys slip. Some guys don't slip. Been that kind of afternoon for Maryland. Chances slipping away. 13 minutes and five seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Clemson still leads at 17 to nothing. Rushing just three men through the hands of Buddy Rogers and then a late hit by Andy McCrory that has some of the Maryland fans a little bit upset. So you can talk the talk when you're up 17 zip. That's the thing about the game that I enjoy. Points put you in a position to talk a little smack. And good hits, part of, part of football. Warren Forney unloading on Brian Cummings, forcing him to get rid of the ball a little harder than he probably wanted to to Buddy Rogers. Got to hit the quarterback. Got to hit the quarterback every shot you get, as long as it's legal. Really into a four-down situation right now for Maryland with 13 minutes to play, third and ten. Clemson rushes just three, and Forney puts pressure on Cummings' his hit as he tried to throw it, and he is downed right there. It has been an impressive day by that Clemson defensive line, their fifth sack. They have all come from the down linemen. Well, you see those little tiger paws on the back of those helmets. They're going to have to order more of those after this ball game. He's actually got Lewis open down the field, but can't get to him. And the way they converge, it's just impressive. It really is. And the Maryland offensive line, you got, they just got to check themselves. There's no way in the world three men should be five men, unless those three men Ellis up going for him. Ellis Johnson, the defensive line coach for Clemson, will be handing out an awful lot of Tiger paws. A lot of Tiger paws going that D-line. They've been magnificent. Stop, and Courtney Mosey will tell us that Delay of the game. They called for on delay the offense, of game. Five yards. They were trying to Still decide what they wanted to do, and they weren't doing this to have more space for Scott Milanovic to punt because he's kicking into the wind. No, it's tough. You start thinking about four down football, then you don't want to put these courageous defenders at a disadvantage. They played so hard, but you got to win with, you got to have some points to win. Well, with the penalty now, that makes it a fourth and about 17 almost. Not likely that they would have a fake on, but Clemson still guarding against that possibility. <laughs> Milanovic sends it downfield. McLean, fair catch call, lost it out of bounds, fortunately for Clemson, at their own 30-yard line. 12.05 to play here in the fourth quarter. Clemson 
They've won one and lost one all year long. This is week seven, usually means a win, and they're on top. 17-0, Clemson with a strong ground game and a great job defensively, particularly from their up-front people to control this football game as they try and climb above the 500 mark again. Three and three coming in, two and two in conference play. Luis Salomon's going all the way in the second half as they give it to Lamont Pegues. Again, running on the right side behind Glenn Roundtree and Dwayne Morgan. And you can see how many times they have gone right. Most teams are, if they have a right-handed quarterback, that's the way you're going to go. And then, of course, the fact that you have 310-pound yeah. Dwayne Morgan at right tackle doesn't hurt either. Two years starter. Yeah, he's uh, he's injured, and uh, Big Robert Jackson, who's 6'6", 325 pounds, has been the force today uh, for the Clemson Tigers. Former All-American out of H.D. Woods. Left this time with Solomon trying to keep it. And Eric Hicks is right there to drop him for no gain. It'll make it a third down situation. But the frustration on the Maryland sidelines has been the offense, which after scoring 55, 26, and 20. No, I take it back. I'm looking at the Clemson numbers. After scoring 29, 32, 31, and 41 in the first two ball games, just 12 points in their last 11 quarters in the loss to Georgia Tech, the 9-6 win over Wake Forest, and now the 17-0 deficit here. Solomon on third down, flushed out of the pocket, and down he goes. He'll lose a couple. The Maryland defense forces a three and out, but time really becoming a factor with 10-35 to play here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Terrapins have been uh, just courageous. I mean, despite the numbers and, and rushing, courageous effort not to give up. You know, it just deflates you as a defender to have three and punt, three and punt by your offense. And those guys, they understand what's going on. I mean, they're, they're struggling. And it hurts you, and it is moralizing. You get them the ball three times, and you get nothing out of it. And it does. I mean, it's tough to keep your spirits up, even if you got Duffner on the sidelines. McAnally with the breeze to his back, sends it towards Jermaine Lewis. Knuckleball that Lewis handles at his 21. Going to try and run through space. Jermaine Lewis on the move out to the 47-yard line. The big play man nearly broke it. A 27-yard return after a 47-yard punt. We had a couple of penalties today on clipping. Now watch this time. Good judgment. You know, you play part of this game from the neck up. And it's some good judgment by the Terrapin return men. And it's just fun to watch this guy run the ball. 27-yard return for Jermaine Lewis to give Maryland the ball out near midfield. They have actually had decent field position to start most of their drives here this afternoon. They've just not been able to sustain anything. Only 35 yards on the ground, thanks in part to the five sacks today. White, Curry, Simpson, really, Bradford, Forey, Plant, they've just dominated. Again, that play-action fake, Cummings under duress, throws it incomplete to Mansell Johnson. Oh, that should be a flag. Yeah. Tell you what, there was a little bit of a late hit by Peter Ford on Mansell Johnson. Now, I love contact, but I think that you got to look at those yard markers and consider where in that you're on the field. We'll see these Clemson Tigers again next week down in Atlanta as they tangle with a good running ball club, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and versatile quarterback Donnie Davis. We'll have it for you 12 o'clock here. ACC football, check your local listings for the station in your area. Tigers on the road. I'm telling you what, they they're have, happy. They're special on the road. 2-0 and in conference play on the road. This would be win number three if Maryland doesn't make a big comeback. Flip it out the flat too tall for Brian Underwood. Sap was there. That might have been a skull sandwich. I mean, Sap is played. I like to see the big time guy step up and get it done. You know, Dawkins has made plays and Sap has been there. That D line, yeah. Uh, Peter Ford. Peter Ford has stepped up and played some good ball, too. But Patrick Sapp is a remarkable story. I mean, a guy who had some up and down times as the quarterback of the Clemson Tigers, moved to wide receiver for a time last year. 
with his big body. They said, let's try him a defense, and he ends up being a starter at linebacker almost from the outset. Yeah, you better leave it. Don't book his Sundays, because he's going to be taken. Cummings trying to find some space. Gets a block from Underwood, but he'll be shy of the first down. Again, the pursuit of that Clemson defense him from gaining more yardage and Brian is very slow to get up. Yeah, with a competitor though. He, he was looking for it, giving it all his all in all. Tigers again. She kind of got bottled in that time. You, you, you're blocking people. Bradford gets pushed down. See, this kid won't quit. He's had the ankles. Just need a little better effort outside though by Underwood. It's almost like you're not going to do anything. Get out of the way. Now they will go for it on fourth down. Huddle clock is already down to 10. and four. They just get it snapped in time. Cummings to G. Roy Simon, but he's not going to get the first down. He gained a yard. First of all, you can't throw under the distance. You want to throw over the distance. A lot of it's just obviously discouraged. You know, Jack, you're going to yard mark. I mean, you know, you're coaching, you said, okay, guys, we got to get the first down. Well, first of all, it helps if you run the route over the marker. And then if the ball catches you there, you get stopped, you get it. It's a lot to ask for. First four games averaging 33 points a game. You see what they're doing in the last three games. Scott Milanovic was or undergoing an NCAA suspension through the first four weeks. Maryland had it going, but people have adjusted. Well, also, you know, under when I mean, Rodgers was averaging 4.7 a crack, and that's one of the reasons they were successful. Underwood was averaging almost five yards a carry. Raymond Priester, who averages well over five yards a carry and has had much more than that, better than seven yards a crack this afternoon, picks up about nine on that play. 156 yards on 18 carries for Raymond Priester this afternoon. Talking to Tommy West, you know, remember that old drill when you put the board down, you run under the chicken cages. See, I asked him, you guys still do that? He said, you better believe we do it. See, it's just a toughness thing, man. When you tie your guys up and you have them slugs blocking and stuff and man to man in practice, it pays off running the ball. Milking all of that clock as he can, gives it to Emory Smith, and he'll pick up the first down. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. One tick under eight minutes to play on a dissatisfying afternoon for the Maryland faithful. They have been very strong here at home in 95, but it has been the attitude, as my partner Doc Walker says, of the Clemson Tigers that has been the dominant story. Yeah, they hit the field. They felt like they were going to win. They own Maryland here at Itburg. They own it. Let's try. Priester has a host of red-shirted men in front of him, and he dives forward for about a yard. Mike Settles, among others, on the stop. You know, it's like Virginia. When Virginia had to go down to Death Valley and break that streak, I mean, they used to own Virginia there, and Virginia was able to overcome it. Speaking of Virginia, they are leading at halftime down in Austin, Texas, against the Longhorns in a battle of top 20 teams. And NC State Duke, two teams trying to get it going with the Wolfpack leading in Durham and Carolina leading at home against Wake Forest. plunges ahead over 160 yards on the day now for the sophomore. He is from a little area in South Carolina. He went to Allendale Fairfax High School and they say he is the first Division I athlete in any sport from his high school. And as Doc says, he may soon add to that and be the first professional football yes. player. Yeah from Allendale Fairfax High School. I can see it now that we have Raymond Priest today. Look at that day. Nice, easy numbers to figure out on the average carry. This is a good defense, too. I mean, this is not, I mean, any slight. Maryland 
enters 22nd in the nation and uh, fifth against the pass and they just took it to him. You know, they took it to him between the tackles. I mean, I'll never get off my belief. If you want to control tempo, you got to control it between the tackles. I don't care who you're playing with. That's where it's done. And this offensive line has done it. Smith, Priester. Again, there we see Robert, Robert Jackson. Jackson. That's 325. Plus, you know, I met his mother down at the bookstore in Clemson. And uh, she was looking for things. She was down for uh, Parents Day Senior Day. And I said, how is it to feed this guy? She said, I'm glad he's at school. <laughs> but I love feeding him. He doesn't need that much. I said, yeah, right. By whose standard he doesn't need that much? Fourth and short for Clemson. And they ran out of time. You know, Delay a game call is not something that Tommy West wanted there because they go from fourth and one Ed to ball. fourth and six. Play the game on the offense. The game. Five yards. Fourth down. I'm sure when the Atlanta Cleveland World Series makes its way to the Jake, you're going to be, you have, you have to come up with a lot of tickets. He had to come up with 29 tickets for, for the game today's today. Game. Yeah. But you know he's Well, enjoying. he was probably happy that uh, they expanded Bird Stadium here right. with the <laughs> second deck on the far side, some extra seats, and Tommy West says, let's talk about this. You don't want to do something dumb. 524 to play in this one. Maryland has had a tough day against dominant Clemson. Now Clemson, after the delay of game penalty, said, yeah, why do something that could really put us in trouble? They're going to punt the ball away, let Chris McAnally try and pin Maryland deep. With the wind at his back, he could also just knock it over the head of Jermaine Lewis and out of the end zone. Boy, they're playing defense. They could have just gone for it. Puts the nose up in the air to try and keep it in, but it will bounce into the end zone. So Maryland will get it at its own 20-yard line with 5.16 to play in this one. So often we talk about third down conversions, Doc, but in a lot of t uh, ball games, it's what you do on first down that predicates everything else. Well, it does 1.9. You know, you look at the yards, and we, Maryland was in so many second down and tens, and it just makes it tough when you're going to throw the football every down. Well, down 17 to nothing, and with the time remaining, there's really yeah. little choice left for Brian Cummings now. Goes to the sidelines to Jermaine Lewis. That quick spin move, he stepped out of bounds at the 30-yard line. It'll be a first down for Maryland. You know, you asked a question early on in the game because Maryland really uh, didn't feature that play. One of their best plays, they didn't get to it early on, and I thought it was the field conditions that, 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 that forced them out of it. Uh, now I'm not so sure. Well, I think when Maryland's coaching staff analyzes this game, they'll look back and see what their play calling was on first down and decide why they were not more successful. Cummings with time to the sidelines. Buddy Rogers runs away from Andy McCrory and gets another Maryland first down. 13-yard pickup on that completion. Not going to be a pretty session watching film, especially in the offensive side of, of the war, because that offensive line, a big, strong offensive line, and, and Clemson just went after him. Didn't care about size, used it to, uh, to their disadvantage. He got around them, they outquicked them. You might think that while the final outcome is determined here, there's still a lot of emotion on both sides over changing or preserving this score. Oh, yes. Clemson would really like to make it three straight shutouts. Yeah. Maryland really feeling like they've got to burst that bubble of not being able to score against Clemson. Yeah, you know, Thomas, see, you know, Coach West has not got, he's more animated. See, he can sense that. He wants the goose egg. You know, you have to want to dominate people to play this game. If not, you ought to be in a different sport. Showing blitz. Seven men up close, but they reverse only three again. Cummings. Trying to decide whether he's going to run it now. Finally does. And goes down near midfield. He was pressured by Eric Bradford again and really couldn't go one way or another in terms of running or throwing the ball and finally had to get what he could get about a seven yard pickup on the run. Yeah, but you also want to get out of bounds. Not take a hit. You see 
less than 10 yards of completion. Wanted to pump fake to Lewis. He's got him behind the secondary and couldn't get it to him. That has also been the story today for Maryland. How many times have they had a receiver open deep? A couple of times Cummings has overshot the mark. One other time Mansell Johnson fell down when he was open deep. Yeah, they had one opportunity. Here's a team that has, you know, big plays, 53 yards, 50 yards, 48 yards to James, and it's just um, give credit a lot to the secondary of the Tigers, because even with a three-man rush, that secondary, they were all over the territory early on. Fourth and three, they'll have to go for it with 4.05 to play. And they give it to Buddy Rogers, who's got the first one. Maryland keeps its drive alive at the Clemson 45. But for Buddy Rogers, not many touches of the football, only his seventh carry of the day for 24 yards. Yeah, it's tough, especially if the quarterback's not under center. I mean, it's just uh, Brian Underwood, five carries for nine yards, so just 35 yards, less than three yards a carry out of that super back spot there, one back position down the middle over the head of Simon, nearly picked off by Brian Dawkins. Brian looks like he might have pulled a muscle. Yeah, landed funny, didn't he? Yeah. Brother Ralph was an outstanding player at Louisville. And as Doc mentioned, I don't think Brian's football career is over at the end of this season. Oh, no. He's just getting started. Oh, yeah, when you fall back on, your heel hits first. and it Get that jarring yeah, hit on the hurts. small of your back. Yeah, he's, he's just eating his lunch up, going after him now in a big way. Brett Williams, who lines up as an outside linebacker many times, was the defensive end here. Maryland's going to take a timeout with 3.29 to play in this one. We'll be right back. Now look at that young lady. There you go. That's how to be <laughs> ready as that weather starts to turn in the latter part of the football season. Look at that smile. Love those Argyles, huh? Third and nine for Maryland at the 44 of Clemson. Cummings again pushed out of the pocket. Slips away but lost the football and got it to Carlos Curry. Even when he doesn't make the tackle, makes a big play. You pointed him out earlier. I mean, he's just been playing that nose tackle spot. I always say it's the toughest job in football in terms of you just getting pounded on by guards and centers. And this time, Brian is simply trying to make a play at this point. And you see that turf condition. He comes by, swipes at the ball, and comes and saves it. Fourth and 16 for Maryland. Perhaps their final hope of ending the scoreless string against Clemson here in 95 anyway. Cummings eats, sustains, it downfield and nobody's there. Mansell Johnson turned up. Cummings thought he would go deep. A long day for the sophomore from East Chester, New York as Maryland will turn it back over to Clemson. And you can believe that quarterback talk will continue in the nation's capital. But not to take anything away from this defense or the fact that the Clemson Tiger defense has just played well. I mean, really, even when it was early on and just down 7-zip, they were flying to the football. Uh, it's a courageous effort, really was. And Milanovic uh, with the NFL cap on. Somewhat of a signal. Just looked like when Scott played that first game against Georgia Tech, you know, it's tough to come in week five of the season. Oh, no. You know, everybody else is a lot more battle prepared than you are. No, he was a deer in the lights. Deer in the lights in that game against Tech. And uh, that's going to happen. I think you'd be able to play yourself in the shape. Yeah, Terrapin down. Al Wallace is down on the field. Mike Settles and Mario Chavez on the stop on the first down run. Well, that hurts him. 
Johnny Hicks has just played his guts out. Maryland dropping to five and two on the season, and they go to three road games in their final four, which makes it tough in their efforts to try and perhaps get to a bowl game at Louisville, and that can be a tough place to play. Mm -hmm. Ask the Carolina Tar Heels, who had to go to the final seconds to win. NC State trying to win this afternoon. Come back here to play top 25, top 20 team, the Cavaliers. That's a big rivalry between these two schools and then finish the year at Florida State. So they really felt this was a game they wanted to have and it didn't work out that way. For the Clemson Tigers, we've talked about they've won every week in the odd numbered games and lost in the even weeks. This will put them at Four and three on the year. They'll stay on the road, which hadn't really been a problem for them oh, in the game right. we'll have next week that's at right. Georgia Tech. And, and then come back home and, and play a few games at home. And, and who knows in terms of the Tigers, they they have to win at least seven ball games because mm -hmm. one of their victories right now against one double A Western Carolina. You see NC State and North Carolina both leading in the other games in the ACC right now. Yeah. They need four out of five wins. and. Next week, they'll get a big dose of CJ. Yeah. CJ you know. Williams and Charles Wiley yeah. and Donnie Davis. Should be a heck of a ball game. That should be a very fine football. Two very aggressive defenses and two strong running games as they continue to attend to Al Wallace. And it looks like the junior out of Delray Beach, Florida, is going to need some assistance to the sidelines. Yeah, Johnny Hicks. Oh, Johnny Hicks, excuse me. I said Al Wallace, yeah. you're right. It's Johnny Hicks, the sophomore out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He's played so well. And then if you start losing a few of your, your anchor players, you know, it just, uh, it could cave in on you real quick unless you get some guys to step up and make some plays. And one thing about it, I don't think you can attack Clemson out on the edges. Game, You're not going to outrun them. I mean, <laughs> this is a... This was a clinic today. I mean, for, for all practical purposes, it was seven on seven for the Tiger defense. And they just happened to have on pads. And it's just, I don't know how you can do that. Hicks to the sidelines. And now we're ready to go again. Clock resumes. Two minutes to play in this one. Emory Smith pulls straight ahead. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Maybe the turning point of the ball game, Doc, that sequence when it looked like Clemson might just run out the first half, getting the ball back with just over two minutes to play in the second right. quarter, leading only seven to nothing. They got a big first down run. Well, I think that was by it. Raymond Priester and then Neilon Green with a scramble for another first down, although he came up gimpy. The roughing, the kicker penalty kept the drive alive, and the, the volleyball play in the end zone to make it 14-0 was really all that Clemson needed to establish control of this football game. Nothing like going in, there's Neon, he's smiling, loving life. Nothing like going in at halftime with a big play. I'll tell you, bad news, though, for the Maryland Terrapins as you uh, watch Johnny Hicks go off the field. It looks like he's definitely got a problem with the left leg. Yeah, no pressure on that leg. It's a bad sign because they had to try to carry him the entire way off. He goes inside the Terrapin training room and that's when it starts to compound, compound itself because Maryland still has an opportunity to do some great things this year. But when you look back at it, they're going to have to beat a good football team in order to get the respect nationally that they're after. Yeah, their one impressive win, the victory that we saw in the second week of the season against North Carolina. Right. Their yeah. other victories this year have been against teams below 500 mm -hmm. on the season. So you have to start to check yourself. Last week, Milanovic was counseled sold by Cummins. This week, Milanovic sits over and says to Brian, hey, I know what you feel like, pal. Solomon on the naked bootleg will have the Clemson first down. Fake the toss to Fagese right, bootleg left, and picks up the first down. That will sew up this one. Maryland has a timeout left, but probably will not use it now. This guy has some feet. I mean, he's a little Fred Astaire. I mean, he gets rolling on the edge. Hard to figure out which way he's going. Out of Somerset, New Jersey. Dean's List student. 
21 first downs on the afternoon for the Clemson Tigers to just eight for Maryland. Only the 17 points because that tough Maryland defense forced three turnovers. Yes, it did. Terrapins have a lot they can build off the positive defensively. Bubbled snap, but Solomon recovers and dives forward for a couple. Offensively, you just have to hope that the guy who's doing the video for you gets kidnapped on the way from here to the room, you know, and they don't come up with the film. Well, the only salvation out of that, if you're an offensive player for Maryland, it's going to be a collective effort. There isn't going to be one group, receivers, oh, offensive right. line, right. running backs, quarterback, that can no. say, well, we played well. No. Everybody stinks. Sometimes that's the best way. That's lose, right. Yeah. You know, you just go down that way and you try to get over it and get ready for the next one. Emory Smith straight ahead for a few more. Smith having a good day. Out near 100 yards himself. He's got 96 yards unofficially on what might be the last play of the ball game. Courtney Mosey now sets it in play, but they will not have to make another snap. And the Clemson fans who ventured to College Park and filled up a section of Bird Stadium have enjoyed this one as they make it three straight shutouts against the Maryland Terrapins. Tommy West congratulating some of the troops as he sees his team go to four and three on the season with a convincing 17 to nothing triumph over Mark Duffner's Maryland Terrapins. Orange Crush, Jack. This is Orange Crush served up for the third time. So Clemson comes up big with a dominating ground game and an impressive job by their defense. Let's talk to Tommy West. He's down with our Mike Hogwood. Tommy, congratulations. Great win today. And I, don't have, I think you would say this is a win for the defense. They really stopped everything Maryland wanted to do. Well, I'm going to tell you, and that is a very explosive offense. Now, I thought our defense played extremely well. Uh, I tell you, this bill had a lot to do with win, had a lot to do with who had to win. But I, don't take anything. This football team is fun give an effort and something good happened to it. Maybe a turning point in your season, this performance. Well, I hope so. We're still a very young team. We have to take it one week at a time, but this is a big, big win for these kids. Your backfield with Smith and Priester. Oh, they're awesome. They were awesome today. Well, they break a lot of tackles and they're good, strong runners. Uh, and we got some people up front that are blocking very well. All right, this has to give you a real momentum going into next week, and Georgia Tech will be there to do that game on television. I know you expected a good one down in Atlanta. Yeah, no question. Georgia Tech's playing very well right now, so it'll be another challenge. That's how it is in this league, and we look forward to playing. All right, Tommy, congratulations again. Great win for the Clemson Tigers here. We'll go back upstairs now to Jack. All right, the Clemson Tigers meeting and talking it over with some of their Maryland counterparts are Going to have a fun time going back to South Carolina today as they shut out Maryland for the third consecutive ball game. Twelve straight quarters now. Maryland has been unable to score against that Clemson defense. We're going to step away here and be back with more postgame activities from Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland, where Clemson shut out Maryland. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? By Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. By Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. Back here at Bird Stadium along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogg with Jack Corrigan. We hope you've enjoyed watching. You did anyway if you were a Clemson fan. The Tigers 17 to nothing domination of Maryland. And Doc, you talked about, you talked about attitude. Of course, you played the... Uh, collegiately and in the NFL ranks. When you get a dominating situation, a team that, that keeps winning against another program, how tough is that to overcome that when you're on the short end? We'll look at it from the Maryland perspective right now. Well, it's very difficult because you start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt what you're doing, which is the worst thing can happen for a coaching staff. That, that defense played well, but I'm one that believes that you live and die by the run, not the pass. And it was a great job of forcing Maryland into throwing the football and then defending the pass pretty well as they 
dominate. Let's take a look at our Jefferson Pilot Sports players of the game. Raymond Priester with an outstanding effort, 163 yards on the, on the afternoon on just 21 carries and scored one of the touchdowns. Ratcliffe Thomas listed officially with six tackles, but he was around the football forced much of the day. Oh, yeah. Forced a few tackles, forced a fumble, and did his usual superlative job in the middle. Our congratulations to our two Jefferson Pilot sports players of the game. Raymond Priester, one of our players, he's down on the field where Mike Hogwood caught up to him to talk about his success today. All right, thanks, Jack. Our player of the game, as you said, Raymond Priester. First of all, how's the ankle? Oh, it's all right. I just twisted it a little and got it retaped, and it's all right. Great game today. You were running possessed out there. Huh? Thank you. I just tried to do my best, just come out and do my best. And uh, uh, my offensive line, they came out, and they, they were ready to block. You know, they were kind of upset last week that I didn't get 100 week after week before. So they wanted to give me 100 this week. Some big questions about this offense. You answered some of them today. They came up and put an eight men on the line trying to stop the run. You were still able to run anyway, and this team was moving the football. I just think that we were very determined today. Uh, you know, we had the week off to prepare, you know, just prepare ourselves mentally. And uh, we just came back with the attitude that we, we have to get it done, starting with game one right here. This is our new season, as we call it. Great game today. Thank you. Good luck against Georgia Tech next Thank week. You, Thank you. Jack? Well, the new season starting off well for Clemson as they beat Maryland 17 to nothing. We'll be back with more post-game activities after this word from your local ACC station. Now the Clemson fight song playing in the background as they shut out Maryland for the third consecutive season, 17 to nothing this afternoon. And with the victory, they improved to four and three overall, three and two in conference play and keep alive their hopes of getting back to a bowl game. And that's what it's all about. We've been talking about this all year long, about the importance of just trying to spend your holidays playing football. And I think that both clubs now still have a chance to do it for Clemson. As we mentioned, big game for them next week against Tech. And now, Maryland's got to ask yourself, how good are we? Fl flip around that uh, Clemson overall mark, four and three rather than three and four. Part of the reason why they're four and three, Great pressure from their down linemen this afternoon. In particular, Carlos Curry and Lamarick Simpson. They're with Mike Hogwood down on the field. Well, Jack, you guys have made the point. Three shutouts against Maryland in three years. Lamarick Simpson and Carlos Curry, a couple of the big reasons why you guys put that run and shoot and stopped it today. Well, we um at the beginning of the game we said that um, you know, we hadn't been we had one sack in the last like three or four games. And uh, we just made a um you know, a little thing between the defensive line that we were going to come out and, you know, and get after. And uh, that's what we did today. The D-line was putting on a big pass rush today. What were you doing? Well, I mean, we came out, like I said, and had goals for ourselves. And um, we came out and played ball. I took my hat off the mill, and it was a good football team. What about this win today and this team and the attitude now? You're, you're over 500. I was talking to Coach West. This might be a turning point this season. Um, I would hope so, and um, you know, winning this game today, I, I hope that you know it would pick the morale of the team back up, and um, that we could just uh, finish out the next five, four games, you know, the same way that we came out today. You know, the run and shoots a high-powered offense, but were you thinking about that streak at all today, knowing that you'd shut them out for two straight years? No, no. Maryland's just another football team, you know, on our schedule. I mean, this, uh, the, their um, their record, no, it didn't mean anything to us. So we just came out and played ball. You guys were awesome today. Simpson and Curry is quite a team up there on the line. Congratulations. Thank you. Good game. Jack? I tell you what, Mike, you better make sure that those guys stay on your side because they looked a little bigger than you were, they that's did. for sure. A lot bigger. <laughs> we'll be back with more from College Park after this. Back here at College Park, Maryland, where the Clemson Tigers knocked off the Maryland Terrapins 17 to nothing. And you know, we talked about the domination, Doc, of the football game in terms of the ground game of, of Clemson and the ability to pressure uh, Brian Cummings, the Maryland quarterback. But I think if you look at a, a real key point of the ball game, it was that final play of the first half, the combination of Tony Horn and Antoine Wyatt creating the touchdown uh, on the volleyball play at the goal line. So Maryland has a bad play. You get a roughing. Then you think maybe you can get out of the half 7-zip and then this. The tip, which we now feel is a designated play, why it comes over, catches the ball at his highest point, gets in the end zone, and from that point on, Maryland was in trouble. You see Hyatt there, Wyatt, number 19, in the middle of the field, but angling right towards the play. 
and times his effort to get the deflection from Tony Horn perfectly. Made it 14 nothing at halftime. They went on to the 17 to nothing win, and the domination right there in in yellow, right at the top, 321 yards on the ground. Maryland was not allowing much more than that in terms of total offense or to, uh, from the opposition this yeah. year. At the time, 22nd in the nation, and uh, this just doesn't do your defense any justice when you leave the uh, opposition's offense on the field that long, and you have no way to retaliate but three and punt. We'll be back with final thoughts from College Park. Clemson goes to four and three. Maryland drops to five and two. Clemson with a big win today, Doc, and it leaves the obvious question, then can they sustain it? They've been win one, lose one all year. Well, they're on the road next week against Tech, and I think that that's going to be uh, got a farewell for, uh, for Clemson. That real brown attack, and we're going to for a pretty good ball game next week. We are indeed set for a pretty good ball game next week as the Clemson Tigers will... Stay on the road where they are unbeaten at 3-0 and in conference play as they will journey to Atlanta, Georgia to take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. That will be next week's ACC Game of the Week at 12 o'clock. Check your local listings for the time and station in your area. JP Sports staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlanta Coast Conference football. For Mike Hogwood and Doc Walker, Jack Horgan saying so long from College Park where Clemson shuts out Maryland again.